The difference has been as clear as night and day. The Knights started the year with their quarterback getting whacked on a regular basis, and it turned into a dismal record. The run and shoot was a flop, and the Knights were growing desperate and confused. But then the Knights did an about face that has them in first place. The offense suddenly started to flow in the defense, led by Anthony Parker, who has returned two interceptions for touchdowns, began to take charge. Now the winning streak is at three, and today they look to increase their first place lead. It's the New York, New Jersey Knights against the Raleigh-Durham Skyhawks on ABC. Finley Stadium on the campus of North Carolina State University and home to the Raleigh Durham Skyhawks in the World League of American Football and today the Skyhawks host the Red Hot New York and New Jersey Knights. Good afternoon everybody and welcome along with Dick Vermeil and Mark Jones. I'm Brian Musburger. Nice to have you with us on this Sunday afternoon. The big story in the World League they still cannot beat the European teams over in Europe. Yesterday, for example, Barcelona won again, beating Birmingham 11 to 6. And in Frankfurt, came into Florida last night, rallied in the fourth quarter as Tony Baker caught seven passes for 173 yards for the game, a 17-14 final. So London still atop the European division, and for the Monarchs, they'll play San Antonio tomorrow night. Barcelona and Frankfurt still in pursuit of a playoff berth. Meanwhile, in the North American West, San Antonio for the time being with a half game lead. Sacramento slowly sliding into the Pacific Sunset at two and five. And in that game for the second straight week, Sacramento fell in overtime, this time to Montreal 26-23. And the machine keeping a little heat on the New York, New Jersey Knights. We call this Dick Vermeil the mediocre division with the Knights at five and five. But in fairness to the Knights, they've been red hot lately. What turned it around for them? Well, there's one obvious reason. The first three games they played, they, they played very good football teams. The last three games they played, they played losing football teams. But I think the success or the improvement of the team goes way beyond the competition. I really believe New York, New Jersey Knight players are gaining understanding. They're gaining confidence in what they're doing both offensively and defensively. And if you look at the screen, I think these graphics reflect you can see uh, scoring almost three times as many points right now, giving up fewer points. Sacked first three games, 27, now only 13. And in turn, they're sacking the opponent quarterback. Now, when you combine improved understanding and confidence in what you're doing both offensively and defensively with the talents of, of the likes of Eric Wilkerson, their fine running back, who might very well be the best running back in the World League, you're going to win football games. This guy, Eric Wilkerson, can score like a wide receiver can from anywhere on the field. You know, the other side of the coin is not nearly <laughs> as bright. It's a 10-week schedule. Yeah. The Skyhawks find themselves in desperate straits at 0-6. Bobby McAllister, their starting quarterback last week in London, has been benched. Joe Pizzo moves into that spot. He's with Mark Jones, so down we go to our mark. Yeah, Joe, uh, you're the starting quarterback now of an 0-6 team, and you haven't started, actually, since your senior year in college back in 1986. The Dex teams stacked against you a little bit today. Well, he, it always has been. Even uh, the first year out of college, you know, making a professional team from a small school is uh, it's kind of an unheard of dream. But uh, I, I don't think about that. I've got 10 other guys on the field that are going to play hard uh, the whole game. And, uh, you know, they support me, and uh, I think we'll be fine. You had a good second half in relief in the fourth quarter against Frankfurt a couple of weeks ago. Can you exploit New York the same way? Well, you know, I hope so. Uh, again, in that situation, uh, it, it just seemed like the team uh, the offensive line blocked a little harder. The running backs ran harder. Receivers made some great catches. If we play hard, we can play with anybody in this league. Thanks a lot for joining us. Good luck today. Thank you. Let me say hi to my mother and father out in Lancaster, California. All right, back upstairs. We're still trying to find out where Mars Hill College is, guys. <laughs> All right, Buck, we will do that as the afternoon unfolds. We have a partly sunny day here on natural grass. This is a lovely stadium, North Carolina State, of course, in the in the ACC. The Knights win the toss and so Wilson Hoyle of the Skyhawks will put the ball on the tee and get underway with Anthony Hardy and Tony Jones back deep 
of the Knights who are wearing their home jerseys in one of the five home games. The home team of the World League wears its road uniform to show the fans. And so today, Raleigh Durham dressed in white. Coming back from a European trip, they suffered a heartbreaking loss in Frankfurt in the final seconds, and then they were blown out in the second half by the Monarchs last Sunday. 0 oh and 6 against the 3 and 3 Knights. Underway. And the ball is fielded by Jones to the 30. Good return for Tony Jones, a newcomer in that defensive backfield. So here is Jeff Graham, who at Long Beach State broke all of the major passing records at that school. Was drafted by Green Bay and had a cup of coffee with Washington. He was traded on the day of the draft. Behind him, with the run and shoot employed by Miles Davis, the four wideouts, Gilbraith, Lewis, Burbage, and Turner, but Eric Wilkerson, the lone running back there, certainly has been the story on this offense the last few weeks. No surprise here. First down pass throws complete to Turner. And he works his way for a first down against the Skyhawk defense. The offensive line getting better. Cyril's out of Auburn has graded out the highest. Warren next to him. Scott is the center. Hussar out of Michigan, the right guard. And Cesar Rente from Oklahoma, the first player ever drafted by the World League, is the right tackle. Graham with the draw play handoff to Wilkerson. Wilkerson breaks free and he gets to the 44 yard line with Rafe Wilkinson tackling him. Let's take a look at that defense for Roman Gabriel's Skyhawks. Carter, Amons, and Grabizna work up front. The four linebackers, Woodson, Glasson, Wilkinson, and Gadsden. The secondary will be tested frequently here today. Samuel, Hickerson, McFadder, and McGurk. Hickerson moving in as a starter for Jackson. So, Dick Vermeil, what do you think about this drive so far? Well, they're attacking a zone defense. They're playing them real loose, and I think if Raleigh Durham is going to play defense like that, they better Brent, get some 60, heat on that quarterback. Brent, 60, 32. Go! Push, push. Ran out of time. Uh -huh. 35 seconds that between one. plays in the <laughs> World League. That is a rule that Dick Vermeil is I not don't like it. I don't like it. I, 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 I don't like it because I think it gives the defense the advantage, Brent. They're up there. The defense can change. They can't audible because they're out of time. They either have to call a timeout or take the penalty. The father of the run and shoot. And he's a good football coach. Mouse Davis of the New York, New Jersey Knights. There were a lot of doubters about this system in this new league in the first few weeks, but... Very prolific. 30, Three of his wideouts on Graham's Ooh. left, and they use Wilkerson up the middle again, and he just runs free to the 22-yard line and out of bounds. Samuel is getting him out. That is a paper tissue defense. Well, see, they went to four down linemen. Now, you'll take a look from the end zone. You'll see what I'm talking about. Four rushmen, no one playing draw. See the big hole up inside there? Very simple to run the draw against that kind of pass rush without a defender holding for that draw. And this guy, you give him that much room, he's going to put it in the end zone. Another first down for the Knights. Graham through high and incomplete. Gilbraith, the intended receiver for Graham. What about Jeff Graham as a quarterback, Dick? What's your observation on him? Well, I think he's a guy that's really starting to gain the understanding of what the run and shoot is all about because when patterns are called in the huddle, they adjust after the ball snap to what the defense does, and the quarterback has to read it rapidly as the receivers do, and if they misread at any time, then the quarterback looks bad. He, I think he's doing a real good job. Yeah, go! Facing the second and ten. Push, push. Offensive line gives him plenty of time. Almost intercepted at the five-yard line. Money Intended Gilbert. for Gilbreth. Money Gilbreth should have caught that football. He normally would catch that football, Brent. He's not very big at five foot seven, but you'll see the end zone shot. He'll appear down the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Here comes the ball. You'll see that's catchable. He's got to take that, and he should take and catch that ball thumbs together. You catch that ball thumbs together, you'll pull it to your body, it'll be a completion. Now it's third and 10 for Graham and the Knights. Diving catch on that far side by Burbage. 
trying to extend himself for the first down, but short of it, it is fourth down, and the Knights will settle for a field goal attempt. Barry Belli trotting onto the field for Mouse Davis. Mouse last year and the year before was the offensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions. And I'll tell you, he coached that offense to the fifth best scoring team in the NFL, Brent, and that's why I'm so confident that New York can continue to grow. That's outstanding coaching, and when they really zero in on this offense and get it going, it's tough to stop. It is blocked. The 32-yard field goal attempt blocked by Raleigh Durham. here good snap that snap should get back there and set they want him to kick that ball in 1.2 seconds there's pressure up inside that's a low kick that's a low kick the defender inside got his hand up and blocked it John Carter apparently got a hand up so now we will watch Joe Pizzo and the Skyhawk offense go to work Mars Hill College, located in western North Carolina, student body of less than a thousand. And the rest of his backs and receivers, Daryl McGill and John Birch. Marvin Hargrove, who played a season with the Philadelphia Eagles, the lead receiver, and Clarkston Hines. Behind this offensive line, Rodriguez again playing left tackle. Kuypers, Wolf, Gray, Myers, and Merton, the tight end. So it is the first play from scrimmage for the Skyhawks here today. Hunt, hunt. McGill is the lone setback. Pizzo oh. under pressure. And the ball <laughs> obviously thrown poorly because yeah, Nicholas and Marlat just roared in defensively. Here is that defensive line. Woods, Nicholas, who was married this week, Marlat, and Schlichting up front. The three linebackers, Campbell, Herring, and Sancho. And defensively in that secondary, Parker playing with a pulled hamstring. Moore, Newton, and Tony Jones has replaced Corville at that corner. Corville due back in a couple of weeks. The offense working over there on the sideline for the Knights. Pizzo stepping away from pressure and fires complete to the 30-yard line to Clarence C.A., number 82. A first down for the Skyhawks, a 12-yard game. This is what Joe Pizzo did real good two weeks ago at the end of the Frankfurt game. He went in, he rallied him, he threw 7 for 10 for 139 yards, but what he did, he found the passing point. He got away from the rush, got set up in an area, there were no people all over him, and throws the strike. That's exactly what Red did there. Dick, what about the morale of this Skyhawk team? You know, being on the practice field, you're, you're amazed that they're, they're so enthusiastic being 0-6, so you have to credit the coaching staff with keeping them up. That was Lowry carrying the ball to the 35-yard line, and Melanda Newton making the stop. I tell you, this defensive front four, Schlichting, Marlat, Mikolos, and Woods, last week just dominated Orlando's offensive line. They were the reason I think they dominated the whole football game. 388! Second and five. 388! There was that defensive pressure again as Tony Woods, number 91, came across and hit the ball carrier initially. Woods last week with four and a half sacks of his six and a half total. Well, you're going to see that on the top of your screen, 91, Tony Woods running a stunt with Mikolos, meaning Mikolos charging outside. He's charging on around behind, and that screwed up the blocking pattern of the offensive lineman. Got the penetration. Woods out of Oklahoma. 389. Looking at a third and six. Pizzo being chased out of the pocket and on the move will keep it. There is a penalty flag thrown. There may have been a holding penalty against the Skyhawks. Pizzo was trying to battle his way for that first down marker. I think the holdings on James, uh, Jason Kuyper's number six, the offensive left guard blocking on Marlott. Marlott beat him on a hard outside, and Jason decided to just sort of grab a hold of him, preventing from getting down the quarterback's throat. That was and I think he obvious. should do that. If he beats you bad, you might as well take the holding penalty and don't let him kill the quarterback. This defensive line can do more than dominate the offensive front if they continue to play like this. 
So the ball is brought back to the 24 yard line. They have to get to the 40 yard line for a first down. Roman Gabriel's going to have to go to the quick passing game, screens and draws to slow down that pass rush. Make them respect that kind of stuff first before you run your basic running game. Three and eight. Four wide receivers Three and for the eight. Skyhawks. Hut. Jack He's a Breaks away from the first tackler. No time on that play, and the Skyhawks are forced to punt. Doug Mikolas, the newlywed, leading the charge. Doug Mikolas is a real piece of work. I talked to him a long time in London. We were there visiting, watching him practice, and uh, he's a piece of work. He's a veteran. He's 31 years old, and he said he wanted to play this year just to prove to himself he could still play. And believe me, when you watch these guys play individually on tape, he is the most consistent performer each snap than anybody on that defensive front. This is Peter Bush, the Australian, getting it off. Alexander fields it at the 35 for the Knights. And he'll be out of bounds at the 42. It'll be the second possession for the Knights when you come back. We're scoreless. Raleigh Durham against New York, New Jersey. The hyphenated bowl, if you will. Today's rules of the game are brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Here's former NFL referee Jim Tunney. There's no in the graft rule in the World League. Tell you about it in a moment. For years, you've depended on it. Unlike the old NFL rule, World League quarterbacks will have the opportunity to escape the defender's grasp and complete the play. Like any other ball carrier, the quarterback must be taken to the ground or have his forward progress stopped before the play is whistled dead. Rules of the game have been brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Your car. The World League of American Football. Brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. By Castro, engineered for today's smaller cars. By A1 Steak Sauce. A1, it's how steak is done. And by Honda, number one in import owner loyalty for 14 years. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. The three division winners and the best second place team will go to the playoffs on June 2nd. The Knights are in first place right now. A win today would give them a sweep over their division opponents. That was Wilkerson with David Ammons tackling him. You know, in an earlier meeting a decade ago, Roman Gabriel, as a head coach at Cal Poly, took on Mouse Davis, who was in his last year at Portland State. And Mouse beat him 93 to 7. That was Neil Lomax's final season at Portland State. And afterwards, Mouse sent word over, we didn't run the score up. And Roman said, that's right. Ronnie Turner, a wide receiver on the Knights, played for Roman Gabriel that day. Graham complete. And a first down for the Knights at the Skyhawks 35 yard line. Gilbray, the receiver, and a penalty flag thrown back at the 35 yard line. I think what they called is illegal contact. The running back blocked the defensive rushman that was in contact with an offensive lineman below the knees and cut him down, and you can't do that. Once in contact, if you get help, it's got to be up high. You'll see if he blocks him below the knees. Brent, you can't do that. We'll show it to you here on this replay. Upper, right in the middle, you see uh, business 77, serials number 60. See the running back cutting below the knees? You can't do that. That's a chop block, illegal chop block. 15-yard penalty. So the ball comes back to the 20. Hey, Dick, did you ever get Ridley beaten in 93 to 7? No. Anybody for that? One time I got beaten at uh, Hillsdale High School. Uh, Joe Marvin at Sequoia High School with uh, Gary Beeman and that bunch beat us 42 to 7. And that, that was bad <laughs> I don't forget those kind of scores. I'll tell you, Gabriel isn't going to like you for putting that up there. I promise you. <laughs> Over the middle and complete. Beautiful catch by Gilbraith. And it was perfectly thrown by Jeff Graham. And after the 15-yard penalty, the Knights come right back for the first down. See, these kind of passes, you're going to... The only way you can stop these seam passes against zone is 
shut the receiver coming off the line of scrimmage and break the rhythm of the throw. If they allow them to run those seams, Graham can throw them complete. 29-yard gain. The ball at the Skyhawks, 41-yard line. Draw play, Wilkerson. Let's check in with Mark Jones downstairs, Mark. Gentlemen, just a little footnote, Brent, to the story that you mentioned when the score was run up by Mount Davis. Before the game, both coaches met on the field. They shook hands, spoke for about 10 minutes. And I asked Coach Gable afterwards, I said, is there still any ill will between the two of you? He said, no, because we just hope to win today. So all is square and fair between the two. Thank you, Mark. Roman said at the time that he didn't think Mouse ran the score up on him, by the way. And Mouse whispered in my ear that he could have won the game 150 to 7. <laughs> Second down now. Graham, he'll run for the first down. No one took the quarterback in that situation, and yeah. he was left with a lot of yeah, room. Everyone dropped off there in man coverage and, and not looking at the quarterback. Of course, nobody on the quarterback. When you go ahead and scramble up, I would rather see Graham, and he's a little bit banged up. I think he ought to get down on the line of scrimmage once he's close to that first down. Now, see, he sits there in a half roll. He's getting pressure uh, from the backside. Now he's just roll up and see no defenders. They're all co covering receivers downfield. Get down here. Protect yourself. Steve Glasson of the Skyhawks is injured and down, and while he's being tended to, we'll take a break and come right back. Nobody's good in today's KFC. <laughs> What's it like to face a putt worth $198,000? Find out in the final round of the GTE Byron Nelson Classic today on ABC Sports. That fellow with the Jet t-shirt obviously cannot escape misery. Taking another look at Steve Glasson's injury. Here he is. He goes down and he gets his left ankle caught underneath him. You can see right at the bottom of the screen. And, you know, interesting story on Steve Glasson. I was doing an India, Illinois game one day and mentioned that he had. Well, let the play run and I'll come back with the story. It's a first and 10 for the Knights. The ball is at the Raleigh Durham 27. Graham throwing and it is dropped. What I was saying about Steve Glass, and I mentioned on television doing an Illinois game that he'd had some tendon ice problem in the knees. And during the week, I get a phone call. Guess from whom? His grandmother calls me up, Nana Glasson. Ann Glasson calls me up and says, Coach Ramil, his knees are fine, and that's why he's leading the team in tackles, and he'll be ready to play next week. So, Nana, if you're watching him today, I think he's okay. <laughs> Second and ten. I heard from all of Joe Pizzo's friends this week, reminding me he is not Joe Piscopo. Oh. Incomplete. Woo. That was Lewis, number 88, and he was defended by Pat McGurk. That just shows you how intricate the timing is in hitting those seams. He threw it just slightly behind. And uh, he is more accurate. Now, I've seen him play three football games, Jeff Graham, that is, and you can see that ball was just slightly behind him. And it should have been intercepted that time by Pat McGurk, who's already intercepted four coming into the ball game. Third and ten. Opposite! Opposite! Go! Hook! Hook! There's that Ooh. draw play again. See Breaks I mean? free. You see what I mean about that kid as a running back? You give him a crack and he'll Tackle. take a mile. Wrap up. Load. 38. Load. 38. The ball is at the Skyhawks. 12-yard line with this first down. They're going to run the ball to the right if they don't audible. Go! Opposite! Opposite! Go! Hood! Hood! Runs the option. Wilkerson for the touchdown. He'll walk in. See, he went opposite. He goes opposite 12 yards for the touchdown. Very well executed option play. Taking a look from the end zone, you'll see Graham come down the line of scrimmage. Right down the line of scrimmage. Now watch him. He's watching for the pressure. He got the pressure right there. He flipped it out. Good blocking by those little wide receivers on the defenders downfield. He walks in for six. Well executed football play. Belli's field goal attempt was low and blocked. Belli under a bit of pressure as far as the Knights are concerned. They looked long and hard at Kendall Trainer being waved by Sacramento. Belli no longer punts and kicks field goals. This one he gets up in the air. They're 
Yeah, one Raleigh Durham player I think was late in getting off the field. Well, it's not going to help him. <laughs> Still counts. It's a seven nothing night lead as the Knights are attempting to win for the fourth straight week. Why am I going to open? No, really knows you. Birmingham needs to fire up its offense to stay in the playoff hunt. They travel to Frankfurt to tackle the Galaxy in the World League next Sunday on ABC Sports. You'll see on that last touchdown, Quentin Reagan's up in the right-hand corner at number 56, stunts to the inside, forces the quarterback to pitch it early, and the receivers have done a real good job downfield. Now, it was called to the right. He audible to the left when he called opposite, put it out there. You see the little receivers down there blocking the defensive back. He walks in for his seventh touchdown of the year. Hey, Bob. <laughs> He's become one of the more efficient running backs in the league. Backed up Barry Sanders for a time at Detroit. The knock against him there was he couldn't block, but he runs pretty well, doesn't he, folks? Oh, yeah, just give him the ball. Take his shoulder pads off. This is Lowry from a yard deep. The Skyhawks need a big play on a special team. Lowry out to the 25. What about this run and shoot? It's become more of a run-oriented offense. That touchdown means that out of 16 offensive touchdowns, 11 of them have now been scored running by the Knights. See, so you get down there, and everybody is playing pass defense, and you get down inside that 10-yard, 20-yard area, you got to play those receivers tight man-to-man, -man, and then you run that option. If you don't create the, uh, the bad pitch or something like that, he runs it in. Lydell Carr scored for the seventh time last night, as did B.K. Williams in Orlando. So now three of them are tied with seven touchdowns apiece in the World League. Pizzo trying to bring the Skyhawks from behind. Oh. Almost intercepted his receiver, number 84, Clarkston Hines. Let one get away from him. He has to make that catch. If they're going to stay in this football game at any time, you'll see isolation coverage here. One-on-one, -on -one, he gives him a little shake. Now he comes back for the ball nicely, but he doesn't catch it. Thumbs together, go up and grab the ball and pull it to your pads and get ready for the hit. Clarkston can make that catch. Played a lot of his college football right nearby Omaha, over at Duke. 61. Omaha, 61. Second and 10. Hot, hot. Audible. Ooh, good coverage. Good throw. And complete to C.A. Clarence C.A. with Anthony Parker. Anthony Parker's an interesting story. Dick, talk about Parker's injury and what he's done for the Knights this year. Well, he has a hamstring problem, and it tightens it up. And they were even talking about having a bicycle, stationary bicycle on the sideline for him to ride in between a defensive series to keep it loose. But he probably is the number one corner in the World League right now, coming in with six pass interceptions, two of them return for touchdowns. That. McGill and Lowry are the two running backs for the Skyhawks. On this third down play, Pizzo oh, under enormous pressure. <laughs> Goes beyond pressure. <laughs> under a hurricane. This <laughs> offensive line is just not getting the job done for the Skyhawk organization. It's a makeshift offensive line. You have a left guard playing left tackle. You have a backup center playing right tackle. You have a right guard playing left guard. It's a real problem to put them together as a unit because of injuries like this. But, you know, they did a pretty good job last week against London. They're not here this afternoon. Peter Bush, the Australian. He's a wonderful story. We'll explore him this afternoon. Two-step punter. Booms one to Alexander at the 36. Knights ball cover in at the 37-yard line. A penalty flag comes down late. You know, Brent, you mentioned Peter Bush being a two-step punter. Friday on the practice field, I walked up to him and I said, who in Australia would have taught you to punt in two steps? Because most American punters punt in three steps, which takes, you know, a tenth or two tenths of a second longer. He said, Coach, know what he taught me. I just did it that way. And I said, well, don't let anybody change you. Because that's, he'd have had a number of blocks prior to this game if he hadn't been a two-step punter. Know what he was doing six weeks ago? <laughs> Cooking was in a, a restaurant? That's right. He was a chef. <laughs> yeah. He prefers chef to cook. Yeah. A chef in Australia. His wife back home in Australia is pregnant, yeah. and he hopes to get back before the baby is born. 
He has really improved his average. He never punted in an American football game until two weeks ago over in Frankfurt. Under extreme pressure, remember? Under extreme oh. pressure coming out of his own end zone. Oh. Remember he had to kick underneath? <laughs> yeah, underneath the, the guy. Player. But it doesn't fluster him. See, he doesn't know enough about the American game to That's be right. worried about all those That's variables. Right. <laughs> See, the heck with it. I just punt the football. And he's also, you know, not a bad passer. He was a quarterback over there in their league and wouldn't be surprised if he threw a pass today. Do you understand Australian rules football? No, no, I don't. I don't, I don't. I don't even. I'm we have a hard enough time with our own. Right, I'm waiting for it. Really? <laughs> in the back, number 25 on the run back. 10-yard penalty. I'd forgotten about that penalty. It seemed like last year. <laughs> I think what it was. Along with this? I, I don't know. Here's the penalty. You'll see Mark Moore, number 25, come in and push from the back. <laughs> they called it on the wrong guy. That's all right. That was on Reggie Berry, number 20. Now it's first and 10 for the Knights. Grand. The heat gets it off complete to his running back, Wilkerson, who makes his way to the 35. As Graham was going down, he somehow got it off. Real good pressure that time by Grabizna, number 77, from the top right hand of your screen. He gets a good push up inside by the nose guard. Doing a good job there, Mr. Ammons gets the heat, but he still gets it off. He still gets it off. I'll tell you this, he can't take too many hits today. Graham has, he's, he's sore all over. Playing with a knee brace on his left leg. His center stepped back on his foot as he was pulling away from the center snap last week. Audible, audible, going to go. Uh, he ran out of time. There's that 35 second clock again. <laughs> Let's check in with Mark Jones, who is with my favorite Australian putter. Mark? You got a lot of fans here in America, Peter. Any truth to the rumor that you want to become a quarterback now? Yeah, yeah. That's, I play quarterback back at home, and uh, I came over as a quarterback to learn to play quarterback. But I've got a lot of learning to do, so hopefully in the next couple of years, if I can keep playing, I'll end up as a quarterback. So that's my main love. But I love punting, and uh, if I can help the team do that, well, that's what I'm going to do. There you go. The first Australian maybe to lead his team to a World Bowl championship. Who knows? Thank you, Mark. Good. Meanwhile, Jeff Graham trying to do that, and that was pretty good coverage by Peter Samuel that time. He was all over the wide receiver. See, they came with the same look, the same blitz this time that they did when they got the penalty called when he was audible for too much time. You'll see tight man-to-man -man coverage by number 31, Peter Samuel. See, he goes up there with him, and Peta is only Peta is only five foot seven. The other day, he said, "Coach, I'm really excited about playing against New York, New Jersey receivers because they're as short as I am. <laughs> <laughs> I can eat soup off his head, really. I mean, he's got a he little... hyperventilated yeah. uh, last week in London. Did he tell yeah, you? Yeah, he how did. It was? Yeah. We come to the end of the first quarter. We'll return after a word from our ABC station. Sunday, you don't know yellow, nor the book and magic of Bell Atlantic Company. Bad. Oh. New Horizons in Medicine Monday. The World League of American Football. Brought to you by Kentucky Fried Chicken. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. We're back. New York, New Jersey. Quarterback by Jeff Graham. Leading here seven nothing. We start the second quarter. Third and eight. Wilkerson, the lone running back. Three wide receivers in the run and shoot. No tight end. Under pressure, they set the screen incomplete. So the first quarter numbers, Dick. Well, obviously they're going to be dominated by New York. You can see, but look at the rushing yards: 75 yards for a passing team, 57 yards for a passing team. That shows you that the defense is rushing the passer. They're running those draws up underneath it. Well, here is the new punter that the Knights picked up a couple weeks ago. Bob Liljadal out of Texas. He was a splendid all-around athlete down in the Lone Star State, and he booms one. Hargrove with a fair catch at the 27-yard line. We'll come back. Carter Finley Stadium. Fight all taste because it's marinated with 11 herbs and spices. Nobody's 
Saturday at noon Eastern, ABC Sports heads off to the Brickyard as the world's top drivers battle for that coveted pole position. Then at 3 to Central, Spring Fever hits the Pro Bowlers Tour with the 125,000 Fresno Open. And to complete the Saturday at 4.30 Eastern, ABC's Wide World of Sports brings the former world and Olympic champions as they go for the gold at the World Professional Gymnastics Championships. Plus, the American Championship Racing Series continues with the Pimlico Special Live, all beginning Saturday on ABC. Here it is the Raleigh-Durham Skyhawks with a first and ten behind quarterback Joe Pizzo. He is their third starting quarterback of the season. Crushed from behind by Campbell. See, Greg Schlichting, number 92, really laid the lick on it. When you run a play-action pass, set up to show, throw the ball quickly, and the pattern's not there. Now, see him set close to the line of scrimmage. It's not there. The pressure's going to get to him because he's on the line of scrimmage. That was a good job of consistent rush pressure by Craig Schlichting, but the defense took the pattern away downfield. Well, it is a very good defensive influence for the Knights to be practicing every day in the Meadowlands. Bill Parcells comes out occasionally and watches them. Several of the New York Giants have also been out watching this unit, and it has come together, hasn't it, Dick, as one of the better defensive teams in the world? It really has. Joe Herring has done a real nice job, and in visiting with him last night, he told, he told me this is the George Allen defense. He worked for George Allen in the USFL, and he's proud of the fact that he can call it a George Allen basic philosophy defense. See what they do defensively against this third and eight. 421! 421! That's pretty good time. Oh, right right behind him. And Clarence C.A., number 82. See that Antenna pass receiver? They're just not giving him much time to really set up. I'm impressed with how he stays in there and then flicks it off. He throws a nice ball, releases yes, it nicely. And he had, for him, pretty good time. Yeah. <laughs> So Bush against the 10-man rush. Ooh, nice punt. Gets one off to Alexander. Then it hit the wind and came and back. Be a little bit short. The wind really held that one up, didn't it? Out of bounds there at the 44-yard line. That knight in shining armor has come down here. Carter Finley from his Darth Vader is at the game. <laughs> Collect ProSet football cards with your favorite stars in action and get a ProSet World League card in every pack, plus a chance to win free official NFL memorabilia. That first kid, you think you'll trade Warren Moon? Only from ProSet, America's number one football card. Awesome. Call now for free installation. Someone's coming up the drive. Come on, let's go. Real criminal cases will unfold before your eyes. You'll see no recreations. The American Detective premieres Wednesday at 10, 9 central. First and 10 for the Knights. Ball on their own 44-yard line. Ooh, run, run the draw. Run the draw. Oh, my God. Go! Dick Vermeil liking what he sees against that defense, and there it is. And Wilkerson, I don't know, Coach, they were ready for your day. I saw the defensive front, but they didn't stay in the front. They stunned it out of the front and slanted the defensive lineman right into the play. But that was a good call. I'd never not, make a mistake on the call. But I'm glad that. you're not calling down <laughs> sequencing for me. Uh, so as Mouse Davis, he says, maybe we better use another play here. Uh, Mouse was a one-time college quarterback, also played uh, baseball. He and his wife, Beverly, have four children, Brad, Debbie, Brent, and Deanne. Brent? Who would name anybody Brent? <laughs> Jeff Graham with great time. Incomplete. Had too much time. You'll see real good pass protection. Stacy Searles, number 60, left tackle Jim Warren. You see, now get out there. They got the hands out. Now remember, you can use your hands as long as you're, ooh. <laughs> I don't know if you can grab with the right hand around behind the back, tear that seven number off, but the, it's the whirly. If it's not called, it, it's not holding. Go! <laughs> Third and 10. Hold, hold. Drop it, yeah. Pat Should Gerter. have been 
six. That's the second interception he's dropped. He's come in the ball game with two interceptions. I really like how this guy plays corner. He has a natural feel. He has confidence. Here, now watch him drive on that ball. He drove on it very nice, right like he had. He did everything but catch the football. That would have been a six-pointer. That's what they need. It's a big play on defense or a punt return or a blocked punt. His friends in San Francisco are going to shoot him for dropping that one. St. Ignatius High School. Lil Jadal booms another one with that wind at his back. This one will go into the end zone and come out on the 20-yard line. He's one of the better punters we've seen. One of the better punters we've seen. That was 56 yards. Yeah. We're right back. The Spring Tour gets rolling as Bowling's Best head west to California. It's the $125,000 Fresno Open, Saturday on ABC Sports. This is not what you would call a highly productive offense here this afternoon by the winless Skyhawks. Five plays and punt, and then two, three, and out. And give a large measure of credit to the defensive line of the Knights. They are keeping enormous pressure on Joe Pizzo. Let's see what they do here on first and ten. They'll run the end around, fake off of it. Lowry keeping the ball. And Anthony Parker making the stick. That fake reverse did slow down the pursuit. People were coming inside out. Someone down on the field actually yelled reverse, stopped the linebackers from pursuing, and I think they picked up a couple yards because of it. Yeah. What's that? Oh. <laughs> Set! 421! 421! Coming after him. Coming now after Pizzo him. throws incomplete, and it'll be third down. And on the sideline, Bobby McAllister benched as the starter because he has not been picking up open receivers. That was the reason for the change here today. But Dick, the one thing that I've always liked about this young man from Michigan State is that he can make something happen when there's nothing there. Well, he can come up with a big play off the scramble because he is a good runner. He's strong. When they grab a hold of him, they can't throw him down. And he has the speed to make the long run. Yeah, hitting, uh, you know, so on top of everything else, we've got a quarterback controversy here at Volley Durham. <laughs> Pizzo steps away. Incomplete. Parker all over Hargrove that time. That's a pretty good matchup. And that's, you know, as Dick Vermeil says, he's the best corner, and Hargrove one of the better wide receivers. And when you consider how long the quarterback had the ball back there, and he to cover him that tight, that long period of time, excellent coverage. If you were the coach, would you think about changing quarterbacks right now? I, I think I would go with Gabe initially in his thought of, hey, we're 0-6, yes. so let's change wait, wait, hold, 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 hold. Gabriel, wait, wait, hold, 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 hold. Gabriel's a coach. You can't put him in his quarterback. No, but I'd say, <laughs> I, I might now go ahead and say, hey, let's go with the other guy. Bush taking off. Remember, he wants to be a quarterback. Throws oh. complete for the first down. Illegal pursuit. You think it was no eligible to be downfield? There were too many guys downfield on it. They got it called. And was he five yards past the line of scrimmage when he threw it? I don't know. <laughs> Brian McFatter. This, I, this was not a called play. This was a high snap, and he decided he couldn't get it off. I think Mark Jones put the bug in his ear. Hey, I've had punters do that when it wasn't called. <laughs> I fired the guy in the Baltimore game. Makes me ineligible receiver downfield. That's the signal from the referee Bernie Kukar. They lose That's the down. Run. Yes, night take over. Take a look from the end zone. You'll see it's a high snap over there to his right shoulder. He doesn't think he can get it off, so he takes off and he's going to throw the ball now. He looks. There's more than one white jersey downfield to the right side, or you can't see on that shot. Remember, in the World League, unlike the NFL, see, on the snap, it. you can all release and go downfield. So a busted play, a like, punter is going to have to keep it and run, run with it and not yeah. throw the ball. You're, not, you're never going to be able to, uh, to get it off. The offensive team is on the field. Yeah, let's go. The Knights are ready, but Peter Bush was not clear on the rule. He cracked it. Oh, yeah, I didn't see him call time. All I saw was 86 call time. So well, now, that's, you talk, that's see that's like a fumble right there. That's uh, a turnover. It's like a block punt. 
That's what it is. That's what it amounts to with the penalty. Yeah. Well, I came to this side. Break underneath it real quick. Shit. Taking a look at it again, you'll see he makes the decision. He can't get it off. So he gets outside, starts running, and as Brent said, they cover right now. They don't have to wait to hear the punt. They're the ball punted. Too many men downfield. Now, hey, that's loss of down. I'm four down. They don't get five of them. That's like throwing an interception or a punt block. Is this what you would call favorable field position? That's a short field to play on. And now down here, New York likes to run that option play. They really like to run. I wouldn't be surprised if they come with it early. Man to man Green coverage. Reno! Green Reno! Go! Hood, hood. Bring it down there to the is. right. Big opening, he'll walk in. Just like you said, and Jeff Graham takes it into the end zone for six more. Did you hear him call the audible? He called Green Reno. Reno means I'm gonna go right with the play. You'll see what I'm talking about here. He's on the line of scrimmage, and he yells Reno, meaning right. He had a call, they pick up the stunt up inside, see him seal it. The man takes a pitch, man. Nobody takes the quarterback. He walks in for the score, and believe me, he's not a wishbone quarterback. Just no one took him. Barry Belli to attempt the extra point. His punter, Lil Jadal, the holder. Oh, look at that. Wasn't a pretty thing. So was Jeff Graham that. scores his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. And the run and shoot continues to run it in for scores. We'll be right back. If you're considering... Birmingham needs to fire up its offense to stay in the playoff hunt. They travel to Frankfurt to tackle the Galaxy in the World League next Sunday on ABC Sports. Now there's the British flag flapping in the wind here in the Raleigh-Durham area. The unbeaten Monarchs and next Saturday night, what a happening in the Meadowlands as the New York-New Jersey Knights will host them. For those of you who want to see that game, it starts at 8 o'clock on Saturday night. They're expecting a big crowd for that one. Here the ball is brought to the 25-yard line as the Knights move in on a one-play scoring drive with Jeff Graham running 14 yards, their second touchdown on the ground, and they lead by two. And next Sunday, we make our way back to Europe. How's your jet lag, Dick? Uh, not bother me. What makes me bad about that trip, we're not going to be able to see the Saturday night game. That's right. It'll be fun to see. We'll be in Frankfurt for we'll a Sunday Frankfurt. afternoon game or a Sunday night. So we have an injured knight on the field, Mark Moore, one of their fine safeties. Hargrove also shook it up on that tackle, and we'll come right back. After all, why make things tougher on your engine? Castrol GTX, engineered for today's smaller cars. Former World and Olympic champions meet in the first ever Pro Gymnastics Championships. Plus the Pimlico Special. It's all live Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. That accurately reflects the kind of game we're watching here this afternoon. Raleigh Durham has rushed for 11 yards and passed for 18 yards, so they will try it again. Having difficulty even recording first downs against this tough night defense. First and ten for Joe Pizzo. 481! Keeping it on the ground. And a nice run by Bryn Lowry. Let's go down to Mark Jones with Jeff Graham. Mark? Jeff, it seems like you really like to call your own number down there. We've seen you do it a few times, take it in yourself for the touchdown. Well, it just it works out that way most of the time. I don't usually like, you know, I'd much rather have the other guys score, but sometimes when they give us a look like that, uh, you know, you can't help but take it in. What's the biggest difference between this Knights club early, earlier and right now? I think we're playing with a little bit more confidence. Everybody, you know, knows their assignments a little bit better and executing a little bit better. And uh, playing with more confidence really helps right now, especially. Jeff Graham, the quarterback, soon to hit Broadway, the quarterback near you. Mark, thank you. Now it'll be third down for the Skyhawks. 
Nothing coming easy against this defense. No, but they did come out and try to take the pressure off the quarterback and run up inside that defensive yeah, line and right. slow him down. And Gabe's running these elite plays right now. And Joe Herring, the defensive coordinator for the New York Jersey Knights, said if they decided to really run at him, he was concerned and he would come in with five defensive linemen and play the old uh, George Allen jumbo defense. Set! 488! 488! They are now with a first down. They were 0 for 4 on third downs until that burst by Bryn Lowry. That was not clean, but it was effective. They made their first first down. He bounds it in. You see the defense actually over-penetrated and a real good effort by Bryn Lowry, number 30, to mush that thing up for the first down. And their second first down overall for the game as the cheer goes up from the Skyhawk fans who've had little to cheer about here this afternoon. Now first and ten, and Pizzo throws incomplete. Hines the receiver. Pizzo struggling a little bit, but I think what's making him struggle is the pressure and then the coverage. You notice even then, if that ball's thrown right to the receiver, the defender's going to deflect it. Right in position. Well-disciplined defensive football team in their zone drop. Omaha 67! Omaha 67! He's going to run burst corner patterns. Now watch him go to the corner. Chased out of the pocket. Sheds the tackler. Now he's beyond the scrimmage line. Fumble. And the Skyhawks Got the appeared ball. to pounce on it. Two first Kevin downs. Sprinkles, a tight end, recovering. See, he saw the double zone defense, meaning too deep, going to divide the field in half. And he wanted double corners up to the sideline. And he tried to get it there. But the... The, the pass rush got to him. He just didn't have time. You'll see him right there, the left of your screen, getting deep. They ran a stunt up inside. Here comes Campbell, number 99. He gets outside of that one. He's finding, buying his own time, slicking 92, misses him. Now he's a running quarterback again. See? Jay, yeah, get down. Get those pads down. They knocked that ball out from behind. You know, he runs a 4740, so he's not a slew foot. Bringing the chains across to the near side of the field, and it is a first down, as you said. They're going to have to have a number of those plays if they're going to move the ball against this defense. Some broken plays turned into big plays. See, a lot of times when a quarterback gets in that scramble situation, Brent, and the defense is not disciplined to maintain their zones in the field, they'll break it and they'll turn somebody loose in the field and the quarterback will throw it downfield. This time, good defensive discipline. Set! 488! 488! Won't get this run off. He was torn apart by David Adeen out of Wyoming, number 93. David Adeen. He's not a starter, but he came in. He came into the ball game with uh, two sacks, so he can rush the pass. He was coming from the uh, right guard position. There he comes right off. There he. Man, he just beats him badly. He beat Terry Gray, number 64, on that play. That sack this for a 10-yard loss. This offensive line is very small for a professional offensive line with the, the injured starters out of there. It's kind of interesting that the Knights are dominating him much more than London did last Sunday. Yeah. Fumble. He was trying to get rid of the football and couldn't get rid of it. I thought he fumbled it. Well, they're going to mark it down, yeah. it appears, right there. See, there's where a McAllister would help him. Because I think, I think he could bust outside that rush, break outside that rush, and maybe scramble a little bit better. But you can see he has no place to go. He has three, four people on him right there. Hey, that is a fumble. Hey, that is a fumble. The, yeah. Yeah. Pat Marlett ripped into him at the end. And uh, McAllister better get up in the bullpen, I think. He may not want to. <laughs> Good draw. Just, uh, hand off to Lowry. Lowry to the 30-yard line, but that will uh, still leave him about 25 yards shy of the first down. You know, it, it, you can see there, Miklos number 69 is reaching out. He got him by the face mask, but they missed that one. But here comes the rest of the black jersey. 
just too many guys breaking down in protection. They're being overpowered physically, not making mental mistakes. Let's see if they go after Bush again. They were close last time, and he ran. That's Gets this one off. Ball. Alexander's got it at the 36-yard line. Alley on the right side, and he is out of bounds at the Raleigh-Durham 45. So when you come back, the Knights will be threatening again in Carolina. If you think you can't afford a Canon Color Laser copier, maybe you can't afford to be without one. Call 1-800-OK-CANON. -OK We're at Carter Finley Stadium on the campus of North Carolina State with Dick Vermeil and Mark Jones. I'm Brent Musburger. So far, the New York and New Jersey Knights have dominated this game against the winless Raleigh-Durham Skyhawks. They have scored two touchdowns running. They're up by 14 points. We have three minutes and 57 seconds left here in the first half. The Knights have the ball at the Skyhawks 45 yard line. And we'll remind you that at the conclusion of this, we'll take you for the final round of the GTE Byron Nelson Classic. After three rounds, Tom Kite holding a two shot advantage. He's a Texan. Bruce Litsky among that group in second place. So the final round. Coming your way from the Byron Nelson. Right now it is 14 nothing. Go! Jeff Graham, the Knights quarterback. The Knights have won three in a row. They're in first place in the North American push, East push. of the World League. Combo. And it'll be second down for the Knights. I don't know how many of those center uh, quarterback change problems they've had this year, but each time I've seen them play, they've ended up with that problem. Take a closer look. Maybe we can see who's at fault so we can blame somebody. <laughs> we, you know, someone's Typical always got to take the blame. Typical coach. Yeah. The quarterback coach says it's the center's fault. The offensive line coach says it's the quarterback's fault. You call it. <laughs> <laughs> Should never happen. Second down, 15 yards for the first down. They'll run the draw play. This has been very effective here this afternoon. Wilkerson. Pounds to the 43 yard line. It'll be about a third down and eight. Wilkerson will be at 100 yards before half if he streak, keeps going. H under. Miles Davis calling the play. Sending it directly into quarterback Jeff Graham's helmet. What he wants to do is get the ball to Monty Gilbreth, number 81, his H back. He's lined up to the quarterback's left. He's a slot receiver there, number 81. There he is, he's under. He'll throw to him, crossing over. He turns for the first down. Yep. They had him short of the first down if they yeah. could have tackled him. And that shows you, that's a great example of why Mouse Davis likes the small, quick, mobile receiver because they can break away from initial tacklers. See, they go on him, they're playing a man-to-man, -man, too loose to the outside. He gets it, now watch, they both come in on him, poor tackling, poor tackling, but he uses his mobility. See, he's not a very big guy at five foot seven, but he is quick. First and 10 at the Skyhawks 33. The draw again with Wilkerson. Trebizna there defensively for the Skyhawks. Big. So we've reached the two minute warning of the first half with the Knights shutting out the Skyhawks 14 to zip. Power stick for 24 hour control. Well, the international teams with another big night, and you'll see highlights coming up at halftime. Right now, let us go downstairs and check in with Mark Jones. Mark? You know, quarterback Joe Pizzo is a real competitor. He once took a cast off his leg on a Friday to play on a Saturday in college. Well, he might need a cast after this game. After that last series, he was dragging his head when he came off. He looks battered, beaten, and bruised. He's got cuts and bruises all over his arms and legs. I wouldn't doubt that we'll see Bobby McAllister sometime in the second half. Back upstairs. Thank you, Mark. We may have to see Bobby McAllister. Huh? Perhaps you're right, Dick. He might not be too eager to get in there. Now it is second down and nine. It looks like they're coming after him. He's audibly. He's audibly. He's going to go deep. Go ahead. Lay it up. He will. He got his man coverage. Oh. Diving almost a spectacular reception by Turner. 
the, you could see that he read the blitz, he audible quickly, and that's why the coach has to get the play called early so he does have time to go ahead and make this audible. See, bump and run coverage on Padilla, number 31. See, Padilla Samuels, he's, the ball's thrown right where it has to be, and, and I'll tell you this, there are times that Turner will make that catch. Not this time, though. Third down and nine. <laughs> screen. Graham fires that screen to Wilkerson. And with blockers in front of him, Wilkerson, but fumble, Skyhawks recover on the eight yard line. Wilkerson fumbled, and Raleigh Durham has recovered. Gerald Mack pounces on the loose ball. To do all that running and then fumble, sure a waste of time, isn't it? <laughs> Might as well fumble when you get it. You can run, run all that distance. He got stripped out by Padilla Samuels, number 31, came in from beside, behind him and just reached in and ripped it out of there. Good defense. You know, coaches teach this. Coaches teach people to strip the ball out of there. Good job. But it's as good as a well-placed punt inside the 10-yard line. Joe Pizzo remains at quarterback here late in the first half. Bringing the end around, he's gonna have to get out of that end zone. And down at the five yard line, running for his life. Reggie Berry brings him down, avoiding the safety back there. And it was indeed number 82, Clarence C. Hey, I'll tell you, you gotta have guts to call an option pitch reverse into your own end zone. Whoa. And a Gabriel, you know, a Gabriel as a quarterback was a very aggressive signal caller. And I think that's demonstrating that aggressive signal aggressive. calling. Yeah, yeah, very aggressive. So New York now using a timeout. Post draw. Post draw. He came not taking long to call that play. No, he came up with the draw call. Look at a dang ball on the ground. Can you believe that? <laughs> hey, you gotta put it away. You're getting the traffic. He's a wonderful character. Yeah, he is. Cool. Fine football coach. Here's that last play from the end zone. Now watch him flip that out there. Oh my gosh, Marlott number 94 almost got him for the safety. He uses the mo mobility to get outside and get back up to the five yard line. One of the things about the Knights and their players, their morale is very high. And we have got to credit the owner, Bob Sillerman, with helping that out a lot. He makes sure that the team comes together every Thursday night in that area for a team dinner. Bob picks up the check, and I'll tell you, the players really appreciate that. Oh, they do, and that adds, that adds depth to the morale of the squad. The coach can't do it all by himself. From the end zone, Pizzo goes for the home run, underthrows, and intercepted by Jones. To use your last expression, that's as good as a punt. <laughs> now they'll come back from mid with 120. See, the, that, they turn it over now. They have plenty of time with a minute and 20 to take it down in there and get at least a three. He, gets, he has enough time here. He sidesteps and he throws it, and it's just under throwing. And again, he's throwing that ball high, and he's throwing it into a, a pretty good wind blowing right into that the face of that throw. You'll see, there it is. He had him a step or two. He has... Now against the clock, the run and shoot. Knights will try to stick one in quickly if they can. Gilbrace at the 25-yard line. So there's half of the distance they need. They, you can't allow those guys to run down those seams in between defenders against the zone without chucking them as they come off the line of scrimmage. It's a gimme. The Black Knights of the Hudson. Now there are two Black Knights on the Hudson. Graham has probably okay, brought this in the mouth We've seeing that call stuff. Two play. So we're going to call load 6032. That's what we're going to call first. Then we're going to call load 60 Z choice special. We're right on the ball, ready to go. Both of them are on. Two. Okay, let's go. <laughs> you got that? Load, meaning he's going to come to a triple formation. Three really receivers on. to one, one side. Okay, we automatically stop the clock on first down. Oh, do we? Yeah, within the two minute rule. Uh, and instead, they use a timeout. Here we go. We're going to go so run, there's two only one left. run two plays in a row. Yeah. Both of them on two. First one's load 60, 32. The second one's going to be load 60, Z Choice Special. Both of them are on two, all right? Get on the ball quick. Yeah. yeah. Load 60, 32 on two. Ready? 
So here we come. Back-to-back -back plays for the Knights. They'll try to get it in here with a minute 12 to go in the first half. Raleigh Durham is, is going to show blitz right now. I don't know if they're going to do it, but Red 18. there's the load look on the left. Red yeah. 32. He just Red audible. 32. He audible. Go. Foot, foot. And they'll run Wilkerson to the 22-yard line. He did him a favor, audible into the draw, because he had beautiful one-on-one -on -one coverage up there on the top. <laughs> Here's the second play. Go! One on one, hits his man at the 10 for the first down, and it was Lonnie Turner, 86. Graham was so excited when he saw that, he couldn't wait to get it called. That's what he had a minute ago. I said, he'd go up there, go up there, and he ran the draw instead. But he came back and ran that single uh, slant pattern up there against one-on-one -on -one coverage. Raleigh Durham taking one of its two timeouts and giving the Knights an opportunity to regroup. They were having difficulty substituting we're, we're defensive players down here. So that we don't, you know, we don't get caught with too many men on the field. Taking a look up here, you'll see there was a one-on-one -on -one coverage here on the receiver down here off the screen. It was one-on-one. -on -one. See, no defenders in here. They just went ahead and, and took the little slant pattern. Here he goes. See, no help inside. He comes down and gets it right in there. Doesn't take a great quarterback to throw that one with the cornerback that far off. Dick, how much better are the Knights than when we saw them lose in Barcelona and London? Well, their definition of what they're doing offensively is so much better. You know, they weren't a bad defensive team even within the first three losses, but their definition offensively. Now, you thought they were going to come on strong. What did you see then? Well, first off, you study Mouse Davis's coaching career. Every place he's been, he's won. Every place he's been, his offense has been one of the best, including the NFL. I just felt that would rub off in this organization if they didn't go in the tank after those three losses. I'm such a front runner, I gave up early. Oh, but you, you guys are all alike. <laughs> First down. First and goal situation. One time out to go. He's got his time. Touchdown. He'll brave all alone. No excuse for that. Man-to-man -man coverage and no one covered him. That's a mental breakdown, not a physical. It's bad enough to get beat physically, but don't get beat mentally. Come on, come on. You'll see him in the slot right there to the right center of your screen. Number 81, he ran right between two people. Right between two people. They say, you take him. No, you, you take him. Now they'll go back and say, who should have taken that guy? <laughs> Terry Belli kicks his third extra point. And the Knights' lead swells to 21 points. They came into this game favored by 11. Say hi, Doug. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Give me some of this. Love you all. Jeff Graham only reported on March 14th. Lonnie Turner preceded him by a couple of weeks along with Kip Lewis. And then on April 3rd, they decided that Belli could not handle both functions. And they went for a field goal. And Lil Jadal would do all the punting. Dick, what's your feeling as a coach? Someone tried to be both a punter and a field goal special. I think, I think if someone could do it, they'd been doing it in the National Football League, you know? And uh, I just don't think you can do it. Now, Kip Lewis there on the left, number 88, such an interesting story. His father, Sherman, an assistant coach with the San Francisco 49ers, his father turned down the head coaching opportunity with the Knights prior to the hiring of Mouse Davis. Kind of an interesting story. I'll tell you that the New York's doing a good so job inside the 20-yard line. Now, they've been down there four times, and they've scored all four times, except for when they ran the ball in there and fumbled it. Let me ask you something. Roman Gabriel had never been a head coach in a professional level. It's got to be very difficult coming into a league like this, isn't it? Oh, sure it is. Plus, you need good help with your staff. You've got to make sure that you have... You know, no head coach can do it all by himself. You've got to have the right people surrounding you to help you. You can't do it all by yourself. Hargrove was tackled red by Les left, Jackson. Left, there was wrong. Lead ball. Great red quarterback left, in the ball National ball. Football League, but it's a it's a different business becoming a head coach at the professional level and putting together a staff. And remember, these teams all started from the same talent pool. And the Skyhawks find themselves Troubled at 0-6. With a lot of injuries, though. More injuries. I don't, you know, more injuries than anybody we've seen this year, really. And when you only have a 36-man roster, wow. 
They're going to run the lead draw to the right side over here. Oh, good job of defense by Campbell, number 99. Campbell did a good job. You know, he's a stand-up outside linebacker, and they're playing him down in a three-point stance right now. But he, he's a big, strong, physical guy. He did a nice job on that one. So the Knights will take a three-touchdown lead into the locker room here at halftime. The Knights ran for two touchdowns and passed for a third. And Mouse Davis is with our Mark Jones. So downstairs we go. Mouse, uh, you're up 21 to nothing. How do you keep your team emotionally high for the second half? Because you've pretty much had your way here in the well, first few minutes. It seems to me that we should have a couple more touchdowns. So we're going to do a little biting and barking on that. We should have, first of all, we should have gotten a field goal that we missed. Should have another touchdown we missed. So I think there's a lot of things to talk about, Mark. I don't think we are uh, all that excited about 21. We certainly should have a little more than that. Spoken like a true coach, never, ever happy. Good luck <laughs> in the second half. Back upstairs. All right. I love that biting and barking. And we'll have more biting and barking after this message from the World League. And a word from our ABC station. The World League of American Football is orchestrated by the beat of an international rhythm. We don't return it for a touchdown. We put the offensive on. You huddle up, and we're going ninja to the wide field. Ninja to the wide field. All right. Ninja to the wide field. Bell with a Statue of Liberty handoff to Mitchell. Mitchell fumbles out. Mitchell's going to throw a pass. He's got a man wide open. He's got a 10-5 touchdown. The World League of American Football. It's out of this world. More evil than they ever suspected. Neither for the book and match it. The Bell Atlantic Company. Say you needed a room for the night. Would it take credit cards? Fact. Ford F series. Police on the firing line. Monday at Eyewitness News at 11. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium in North Carolina. We're at halftime in the game between the Skyhawks and the Knights. You know, as we approach playoff time in the World League's inaugural season, it's obvious that the rest of the league is still trying to play catch-up with the international teams. Action on three fronts last night. Let's take a look. Over 30,000 witnessed a beautiful Barcelona sunset and a football game that featured defense. On the game's first play from scrimmage, Birmingham running back Elroy Harris is tackled for a safety by Eric Lindstrom. Remember the name. Tony Rice completed his first 14 passes, and this one to Gene Taylor led to this three-yard touchdown by Lydell Carr. The former Sooner has scored a touchdown in every game this season. Birmingham may call themselves the fire, but the Dragons weren't blowing smoke. With time running out and Barcelona leading 8-6, Eric Jones' pass is intercepted by Lindstrom. The Dragons go on to win it 11 to 6. Hughes Stadium was the setting, as Sacramento fans were hoping a power surge would halt the machine. Both teams have losing records, but the fans didn't seem to care. With the surge up 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter, Montreal's Richard Shelton took this reverse on the kickoff and raced 90 yards for a touchdown, his second touchdown return of the game. Then the surge lost more power, and this is what an incomplete pass sounds like to a French Canadian from the province of Quebec. <laughs> 
Hold on, Sirati. The game went to overtime, and with three seconds left, former giant Bjorn Nitmo kicked the winning field goal, and for the second straight week, the surge lost it in the extra quarter. Game time temperature was 89 degrees in Orlando, but the thunder has been anything but hot. As far as Galaxy linebacker Yepi Pau was concerned, all Thunder players were considered primary targets. But the Thunder got it together. Kerwin Bell hit Byron Williams, and Orlando took a 7-3 lead. But Orlando could not stop Tony Baker. The Frankfurt workhorse ran the ball 20 times and caught seven passes for a league record 173 yards. On the next play, quarterback Mike Perez fumbles on the Thunder goal line. Orlando's Wayne Davis recovers, and Perez took exception to the call. My knees were down! But Perez redeemed himself by hitting Craig Morton for a 36-yard touchdown. Late in the game, the Baker went over on his fourth attempt from the one. And the Galaxy's fourth quarter comeback left Orlando flat on their back. Next week, the Fire pay a visit to Frankfurt on ABC. Speedstick, 110% protection. Here I am. Right. In my Saturday, top drivers hit the track in pursuit of the coveted pole position at the Indianapolis 500 time trial. Then, the Pro Bowler Spring Tour gets rolling with the Fresno Open. And on ABC's Wide World of Sports, a field of former World and Olympic champions go head-to-head -head for the first time as professionals. Americans Tim Daggett and Brandy Johnson are among the stars in action at the World Pro Gymnastics Championships. Plus, top thoroughbreds take off in Baltimore in the Pimlico Special. It's all Saturday on ABC Sports. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger Twibel, the TPC at Las Colinas in Irving, Texas. They've completed three rounds of play in the GTE Byron Nelson Classic. And Tom Kite has a two-shot lead over five players. The native of Austin, Texas, is looking for his first victory in his home state. Join us later today right here on ABC. Well, we're back here in the Raleigh-Durham area, but it's been all New York, New Jersey. 21 to nothing over the Skyhawks. And Dick Vermeil, how about the numbers? Well, I, I think right here, the minus seven sort of shows you what the first half was all about. Minus seven yards in passing, 32 yards rushing, uh, total yards rather. That just shows you how the game is being dominated. Plus, in the turnovers, they're even. But when the Knights got the turnover, they went and scored with it. Well, the Knights scored their first two touchdowns rushing, and then finally they passed for one. Well, and this was a gimme. The defense made a mistake in the coverage. They turned him loose in the end zone. Now, see, he didn't even want to throw over to his left. He wanted to throw to his right. Might as well take the guy no one was covering. Now, if the Knights win, they'll have a big hold on first place in the North American East. Now, we're in week seven, 10 weeks, and then four teams go to the playoffs, the three division winners, and the best second place team. They will make the playoffs. Now the two division winners with the best records will host the first round games, but a wild card team cannot play a team in its own division. In other words, Barcelona and London cannot come together in the first round. Now there is an asterisk to all this. Wembley is not available in London on June 2nd. Therefore, if London holds on, wins first in the European, they will be coming to the United States for that first round game. They're in the U.S. right now for a game tomorrow night in San Antonio. And then next Saturday, the big one in the Meadowlands, London against New York, New Jersey. We'll be coming back with the second half of the night. So maybe the Skyhawks could use him at wide receiver. A look behind the scenes as sports and science converge, brought to you by AT&T. The contact sport of football is very damaging physically. When a player goes down with an injury, the first question is often, how to diagnose the problem? 20 years ago, the development of arthroscopy gave doctors the ability to look inside joints like the knee to diagnose cartilage and ligament tears. But this is an invasive surgical procedure, and there are some injuries that arthroscopy cannot detect. More recently, magnetic resonance imaging has impact injuries. Because MR is non-surgical, if no injury is found, the athlete can often return to competition right away. This sports science segment has been brought to you by AT&T. 
Pioneer's best weather beater paint sale. This satin finish is on sale, only $17.99, only at Sears. Nobody's cooking like today's KFC. The World League of American Football. Brought to you by Delta Airlines. We love to fly and it shows. By Kentucky Fried Chicken, nobody's cooking like today's KFC. And by the Upjohn Company. If you're concerned about hair loss, see your doctor. The New York, New Jersey Knights stocking their fourth straight win with a three touchdown lead and they will kick it off to start the second half. Barry Belli out of Fresno State. He broke all the kick scoring records out at that school. And back deep, uh, that is Marvin Hargrove. He's back there with Gerald Mack. And he'll drive him deep. He's got to run it out, or they'll bring it to the 10-yard line. Hargrove Ooh, nice is tackle. hammered down at the 11-yard line. And let's check in with Mark Jones. Mark? At halftime, I spoke with Coach Roman Gabriel of the Skyhawks and asked him about a quarterbacking change. The coach said that he's going to leave Joe Pizzo in there because nobody on the offense has executed properly in the first half. It's not Pizzo's fault, but he said he wouldn't hesitate to make a change if he has to in the third quarter. Back upstairs. I'm going to go back to calling him Joe Piscopo. Maybe it will help. He was 2 of 10 for 18 yards and sacked twice for 25 yards and losses. And that's how they got to their net of minus 7 in the first half. They need three touchdowns to get in this one. Lowry and Burt show the running backs. Incomplete. You take a look at the Skyhawks' first half possessions, and they were very unproductive. They had one eight-play drive, and that ended up with a punt. You just, I mean, there's no way you can put points on the board. Well, they have not been in New York territory this game. They drove to their own 47-yard line. That is their deepest penetration. They have not crossed midfield yet. And the Knights with that four-man defensive front. Three, 68, cut! <laughs> Draw play. I'll tell you, that little running back earns his yard, doesn't he? He does a good job. On Sancho. Does a good Making job. Stop. And that running back, Bryn Lowry, is 5'10", 205 pounds. He played in the ACC, so he's probably been here as a collegiate at Carter Finley Stadium. He played at Maryland. You know, he had a tryout with the Kansas City Chiefs last year, and I saw him in that camp, and he did a good job. He, he was a respectable football player. Shotgun Four, formation. No. Four twenty-one. They're coming after. Cut. Here they come. I hope they pick Sancho it up. is through, and they got it off to the hot receiver <laughs> Melvin Patterson quickly. But Pizzo took a thumping. You're going to see here on this screen. We got a shot of all twenty-two. You'll see the linebackers here coming. No one gets to him, but he gets it off quickly. Boy, this is getting it off. See, no one picks, gets out to the center. Was trying to get out. Oh my God. Three guys hit him. You talk about a quick release. Here's the rush again. Here comes Sancho, number 52. He hits the passing arm. He gets taken down low. Ball is at the 23-yard line. First and 10. Pizzo over the middle, complete. And to the 44-yard line, Patterson again. So Pizzo to Patterson for 21 yards. You know, Pizzo really shows me some class. He's been harassed the whole ball game so far. There he's harassed again. He still sits in there, doesn't panic, and throws down the hole to Patterson, hits him right where he has to, makes him go up over those linebackers for the ball. Hey, that's a good job by Joe Pizzo. And midfield is in sight for the Skyhawks. Set. 117. One seventeen. Hot, hot, hot. Oh, oh. I think that's on the defense. The defense may have made contact first, but then, on defense. but then the offense picked up and moved. Let's see what happens here. Marlott on defense went after him, and I think uh, Jason Kuyper's the left guard number sixty might have moved, but I think yeah. it's on the defense. The, 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 thought, the defense came across and had contact first. That's yeah. what happened here. Well, I think. Marlott number in the middle of your screen there thought right, the left contact. guard move. Oh, there's no question that was contact. Yeah. No, no question about that. He was saying that Kuiper's moved. But... First and five. This is yeah. the deepest penetration of the game for Raleigh Durham. They've almost made it to midfield. 389. Hot. Hot. 
You remember last week against London, they executed a beautiful first drive of the third quarter. Remember, took it all the way down and fumbled it on the six-inch line? So, hey, maybe they're going to do that again today. Oh, they can't stand prosperity. Take him back to the 44-yard line. Okay. Go, I write. There's a great legend, Claude Humphrey. Oh, is he something special? I had the uh, good the fortune. assistance here, Raleigh Durham. Had the good fortune to coach him for three years at Philadelphia. What a, what a player, and even more so, what a person. The good run by Birch. And that's the first foray into night territory. They did a nice job there. Pulled that old backside counter gap play that the Redskins make so popular and run so efficiently in the National Football League. Come on, guys. Here we go, here we go, hurry up. Second Triple right. and a couple. Triple right, Zoom, play pass, 34 hunt, 271, check block down on two, down on two, ready? They're running a play action pass. 488, 488. And Pizzo fires for the Jake first down, and it's down. touchdown! Clarkson Hines walks in as the corner fell. Reggie Berry, Reggie Berry number 20. You'll see the right cornerback, Barry, falls down right there. They were in blitz coverage. No help inside. Safety's all up covering. Max out of the backfield. That's a gimme touchdown for Clarkson Hines. Wilson Hoyle. No good on the extra point. Oh. <laughs> Take a look at the play in isolation. It's just a slant pattern. You'll see there's no help inside. He's trying to cover him inside. He drives for the slant. He slips and falls on that natural turf. <laughs> Old Clarkson goes ahead and puts it in for the touchdown. But the extra point is missed. 21 to 6. The Knights. Today, a guy losing his hair. Birmingham needs to fire up its offense to stay in the playoff hunt. They travel to Frankfurt to tackle the Galaxy in the World League next Sunday on ABC Sports. The Skyhawks score for the first time across midfield for the first time, as a matter of fact. But it's 21-6 as Hoyle missed the extra point, and he will kick it off. Hardy and Jones deep for the Knights. And against that breeze, Go! this one comes up a little short. Hardy fields it at the seven yard line. Ooh. 15, a hole to the left and he can't get there. Down on the 20. And that was a fine tackle by Troy Stedman. One of the last men on the outside. And a fine scoring drive. Pizzo leads the Skyhawks 89 yards in seven plays. And then hits Hines with a 48-yard scoring pass as Barry, the cornerback, slips and goes down. There's an injured Raleigh Durham player at the 15-yard line. So we'll take a break and then come back to Carter Finley Stadium. The triple crack. Tight end Joe Merton being helped off to the Raleigh Durham sideline. And the Knights with their opening possession of the second half. Bring it up to the line of scrimmage at the 20. Jeff Graham, the quarterback. Go! Wilkerson, the running back. <laughs> the draw play. Wilkerson for a couple of yards and no more. Grabizna tackling him. You know, the Grabizna is an interesting story. He's from a very small school, Western Reserve College, and... Uh, he overpowered the people in that league, and when he came into this league in this training camp, he tried to use the same techniques, and he couldn't do it, and he got cut. And he went into the Dallas the team, and he learned to pass rush there, and now he's back, and he's playing pretty well. Second down for the Knights. The defense watching carefully from the New York, New Jersey sideline. Oh, pass interference. They don't throw the flag. Let's go down and meet the newlywed. Here's Mark Jones. Mark. 
Yes, I'm with Doug Nicholas. Uh, guys, it must be spring. He just got married. Uh, tell us how that all started. Well, uh, me and John announced our uh, wedding uh, in, uh, on New Year's. We were getting married on New Year's, and I came down here for training camp, so we didn't have time. But anyway, we got, got married last Monday, and uh, the owner found out we were going to get married, and he threw a big bash for us, got us a limo, went down to town Manhattan, got us a real nice hotel, and got some of the guys rallied behind me, and, you know, we got a limo, and we, we just had a great time. It was one of those things where... Uh, I just wanted to get married, and the owner went all out for us, and it was really nice. Great gesture. David Adine, your best man, wearing a cowboy hat out here to the wedding. No one but David, Wyoming boy. <laughs> I love connection, fellas. Yeah. I just want to say hi to my daughter back home. Graham under pressure, hits Gilbraith after the holding penalty. That's why the Knights were coming out from deep in their own territory. Gilbraith makes his way out close to the first down, an 18-yard gain. And so Doug Mikolas goes down in the World League record book as the first marriage and the first honeymoon, right? All on the same day because it was only a one-day honeymoon. He had to go back to work. In fact, they sent the limo for him to get him to practice. practice on Tuesday morning. <laughs> You'd like someone to come on your honeymoon, yeah, honeymoon. come and get you in the morning. Come on, you're coming to practice. Get up. Go! First down. Yeah. First down and short. Go! Hunt! Hunt! On the option. And oh, they bring him out and stop him. They force the punt. Good job. They have forced the punt. Eric Hickerson up from that secondary. Mouse, you can hear in the background, blaming himself for that call. Lil Jadal will punt for New York, New Jersey, and uh, the Skyhawks showing a little life if they get a good return here by Hargrove. Remember, with the two-point conversion, you can make up for that missed extra point a lot easier than in the NFL. Oh, nice punt. Beauty, he has punted well all day. He drives him inside to the 20-yard line. What a punt. Lost his balance going back on that punt. Here they try to run that similar option they scored on earlier, but the defense lifts, rises to the occasion, and, and stops him for the fourth down punt. And then the 52-yard punt. So justifying Coach Gabriel's decision to stick with him. I'll come out and just fucking beat his ass. Wind's coming in our face, though. So. He's got a little aggressive ability in that huddle, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. No way to misunderstand him. No way. <laughs> got to listen up in the world league. <laughs> It'll be first and ten. You see Roman Gabriel in the middle of your screen. You know, if they'd had the in-the-grasp rule when he was playing quarterback, he would not have been nearly as effective. He used to be great. But not scrambling, but warding off the pass rushers with a big stiff arm. You know, he was, he was the giant quarterback at that time, and uh, just a big, strong guy. And he got that's, away many times with a big play. That's giant as in size. In size. So coming up next here on ABC, we'll have the final round of the GTE Byron Nelson Classic. Tom Kite trying to turn that lead into a victory. And that'll be coming your way right after our football action here from Raleigh, North Carolina. They're trying to get the 25-second clock functioning. You, you know, I see properly. all that golf They're having stuff some difficulty with it right now. So what they'll do is probably turn them both down. And that's what they're going to do. They're going to run off the seconds on the other one. So the second series of the half for Pizzo. On first down, and I'll tell you, they're going right to work on that corner over on that side. Yeah. They want to get him to fall down again. Well, this is Tony Jones who's out there now, Coach. Wasn't that Barry who that was, was out Barry there out there, there before? sequence? They have Barry as an inside nickel backer now. See, the Knights are without Corville. He's out with an injury. Normally, he would be the starter on that corner. They've had to fill out. On the other side, you want to stay away from Parker. He scored a couple of touchdowns on interceptions. So 22 could be in for a workout. It is second and 10. They will run. Get about four yards into the middle of that line. The newlywed, Nicholas, bringing him down.
Tony Woods, number 91, was involved in that play, set a World League record last week for sacks in a single game with getting four and a half sacks versus Orlando, and his play has uh, been very good in this game. So we're live from Carter Finley Stadium. It is 21 to 6, New York, New Jersey, over Raleigh Durham. But the Skyhawks scored on their first possession of the second half. Now it's a third down. And Pizzo off a play fake. Throws intercepted by Parker. Here goes Parker's the sixth straight game with an interception coming down the sideline. And he busts free, and he's down at the four-yard line. Anthony Parker <laughs> does it again. <laughs> he's got a knack, but the quarterback helped him in that situation. Pizzo was throwing under pressure, and he threw it short. You'll see this little play-action fake, faking inside, try to freeze it. They're stunning the defensive line. Here comes the pressure around the outside by Campbell, number 99. Underthrown. Parker goes up and takes it away like he has to. But what happened nicely now, he's intercepted so many balls that the defense is reacting and forming a picket wall for him, seeing they're all becoming offensive blockers. It looks like a punt return. They've rehearsed that so many times. A 45-yard return with that interception. And did they take too much time? He does not have the clock to look at. The whistle is blue prior to the snap. They're in that guard over unbalanced line formation that time. They've been using this the last two weeks. Last week against Orlando, they used it very efficiently down inside this goal line area. Let's go. Who was it? Here's Pizzo throwing that ball under pressure last time. You'll see Campbell right there. Give it to him. There's no way you can go ahead and get your body in the throw when a defender hits you like that. After the penalty, the ball is brought back to the 10-yard line. First and goal for the Knights. Graham, oh, he had Burbage all alone. You know, New York, New Jersey's done a real good job inside this area. 17 times prior to this Who game, they've had a first and goal situation. They've scored 10 touchdowns and three field goals. That's done good offense. So Anthony Parker making a bid for Defensive Player of the Year in the World League. Keep Folks, looking. he wants to be all world. <laughs> all world. Run the option. Second down. Graham quickly, oh. and it was dropped at the goal line. Turner couldn't get the handle at the goal line. You'll see he had him singled up, all one on one up there in the goal line area. He just runs a slant. He's lined up inside, but he gives away the inside move. Drives to it. The ball's thrown slightly behind him. He has to make that catch. Dick, what would you do defensively against the run and shoot at the goal line? I'd, I'd go ahead and contest the receiver's tight bump and run and make him throw the fades. And, and hopefully you can bat that down and let the defensive lineman control the draw. Pull it, pull it. Under pressure, fires complete to Wilkerson for the touchdown. His second score of the day, he runs for one, <laughs> and now he takes a pass for the second. Eric Wilkerson, who played at Kent State, thus becomes the scoring leader in the World League with his second touchdown of the day. Eric Wilkerson comes out of the backfield, the one backfield set, no one covering him one-on-one -on -one in that situation, probably a linebacker. Parker's interception quickly converted into a night touchdown. And tipped across for the extra point. And the Knights now starting to tune it up in anticipation of London coming to the Meadowlands next Saturday. When you buy Valvoline motor oil, in my considered opinion, it's okay to enjoy mowing one's lawn. Oh, for heaven's sake. In fact, my snapper significantly enhances my sense of well-being. Of course, my snapper dealer was kind enough to offer a 14-day money-back test drive. The good man really stands behind his machines. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional help. That's right. See your snapper dealer. Anything less just won't cut it. Former World and Olympic champions meet in the first ever Pro Gymnastics Championship. Plus the Pimlico Special. It's all live Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Welcome back. I'm with Anthony Parker. Your key interception set up that touchdown. 
Seven interceptions. That leads the league six games in a row with an interception. You almost wanted that touchdown yourself, huh? Yeah, I was close. <laughs> you know, every time I get the ball, I feel like I can score a touchdown, so I was trying real hard. <laughs> You're lucky you got to play this game with the hamstring injury. Is that yeah, right? I was fortunate. I rested it all week, and uh, everything turned out all right, so I was, I was able to play. Funny how an interception can uh, make an injury feel a lot better, guys. Exactly, Mark. Anthony Parker now will trot onto the field and see what he can do defensively here again against the Skyhawks. We have gotten word from downstairs that unfortunately the Skyhawks have lost their tight end, Joe Merton, out of Oregon because of a knee injury. Well, yeah. when it was 21 6 Dick, it looked we like we had a maybe it yeah, it had something up. going, but that yeah. interception by Parker and subsequent touchdown. Graham to Wilkerson, his second scoring pass of the game, and Wilkerson's know, second no, touchdown. Okay. Really put him back up on top. Now Pizzo coming out from the 32-yard line. Moving the pocket, but throwing incomplete to number 82, Clarence C.A. And that was Parker defensively. They just uh, can't resist going over there. Well, Wilkerson after scored after the uh, interception. They took it. In fact, both turnovers that the New York have taken, they've gone on and scored, converted them to touchdown. I ask you, why would you come away from the right corner when you've scored your touchdown over there and you know you're up against the best corner in the league over here? I don't think, you know, if you're sitting on the left hash mark and you're going to roll out, you'll normally roll to the wider side of the field. Let's see what they do from that hash mark this time. He wants to throw toward Jones. It's underneath the hard road. And Jones aggressively wrestling him to the ground there at the 35. Don't come to my house either, I guess is what Jones is saying. Joe Merton, the tight end, done for the day with ligament damage. He sat in the film room with me the other day and watched Tate for about an hour, University of Oregon graduate, very complimentary of the University of Oregon program and coaching staff up there. He, he said it really helped him to have that fundamental coaching base when he got into these training camps. He said he felt he was a little ahead. Coach Rich Brooks out in Oregon. Third down, shotgun, penalty marker down, and incomplete. But a penalty flag thrown by the referee, Kukar. I think we have a holding penalty. Yeah, that's what it is. Holding number 64, Terry Gray, the offensive right guard. You know, don't find many offensive guards at six foot one, 280 pounds. And the shorter you are, the problem is you have shorter arms. And the big defensive linemen that are bigger have the longer arms. So when you go to punch with your hands, you still haven't reached the guy if he's punched with his hands. You know, and that, that gets a problem. Well, here comes Mr. Peter Bush of Australia to punt it again. Alexander back to return for the night. I field it at the 38-yard line. Good coverage. We cannot break free. Good coverage by the Skyhawks. Well, let me ask you something. Can any team from North America go over to Europe and beat one of these three teams? They haven't there? done it yet. And, you know, the, the three teams have only lost three games as it is, regardless of where they play. They're tough to beat. Well, we will be in Frankfurt, Germany next Sunday. A little knockwurst, sauerkraut, red cabbage. I'm ready. Can't wait. Hey, we got to wash it down with something. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. You like that German beer. I've never had that real German beer. I'm looking forward to it. So McAllister now up and loosening up. Bobby McAllister. He benched at the start of this game. Wilkerson. One of the better looking running backs, would you say, Dick, in the World League? Well, I've been high on him because, you know, I came in with a preconceived uh, idea in regard to his ability because I saw him in the preseason last year playing uh, for the Detroit Lions and I was impressed with him. Would you say the Skyhawks have a little work to do? More than work. <laughs> More than work. Lose today would make them 0 and 7. Monday, go! Wilkerson to the 46-yard line. Gadsden. Zeke Gadsden. He had a fabulous career at Pittsburgh, didn't he? Number 52. He's in there on the stop. He's talking about it. He had 22 sacks his senior year, so that, that, that's pretty good performance. A little undersized for an NFL player, but he was fabulous coming he, for that defensive backfield. He ended up being the fifth pick to the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, and they don't make too many mistakes with linebackers. Left, stage left. The back left. Third and Graham throws for the first down to Lewis. Lewis free. But not for long. Down at the 46. And upstairs, the Knights coaching staff at work.
Okay. For the night. Let's come up. Yeah. They were quiet. That shows you who's making all the calls. Great. <laughs> There's one boss in that offense. Go! <laughs> <laughs> First and one, ten. One. And Jeffrey Ooh. now in at running back. So Wilkerson is out, and Tony Jeffrey, a one-time star at TCU, now moves in at running back. He did an excellent job of running off the center's block. Pete Scott, number 51. He started to his left. Scott took the nose guard to the left. He broke back in behind him. Good reading by that running back. Perhaps Mouse wants to keep it on the ground and go to work on the clock. Eat up the clock. He leads 28 to 6. He would love to get out of here healthy with Pull London it, ahead it. of him next Saturday night. Oh, Sunday. Bill Brace breaking three. Good job, Monty. And out at the 35 or 36 yard line. Let's go. Where it will be close to a first down for the Knights. You know. <laughs> Here's a shot of Wilkerson. Uh, I don't know how many yards he has. 84 yards. He'll get his hundred. He'll get his hundred. He had two 100 yards games coming in uh, to the ball game. And uh, the success ratio with a hundred yard running back in your backfield game day, you win about 75% of the time. Graham oh. taken down by Riggins. Riggins. Quentin Riggins, number 56 out of Auburn. All SEC senior year, 165 tackles. They pick up everybody inside. He must have delayed his rush, which sometimes if you delay your rush slightly, then linemen that have you take their eyes off and go to help somebody else, and then you come and you get that clean shot. That's the first sack surrendered by the Knights yes, red, two, six, here this afternoon. Red, two, six, this is a team that gave up 27 sacks in the first three games. Under pressure again, they set the screen into the hands of Jeffrey. Jeffrey to the 20, first down, but a penalty marker thrown back at the 40-yard line. Jeffrey to the Skyhawks 20, but there is a penalty flag. If Ineligible receiver, then they have lost the they're down. They're gonna call it back. Taking a look at that screen pass from the end zone, focus your attention on the two offensive linemen to the right side of the screen. That'll be Cesar Renti, 71, and Mike Kuzar. See him set, now watch him lead. See their lead, he wants to get it behind. Oh, he's got a great knockdown block out there in front of him. Too bad they got downfield too soon. You know, in college, the offensive lineman can get downfield as long as the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Excuse me, what did he say? 90, 93 what? Streak age. All right, the streak is the deep call. Push, push. Riggins again. Quentin Riggins leading the charge. They'll spot this at the 35-yard line. They found a stunt or some kind of maneuver over there that New York's not able to handle. He's coming from his outside linebacker position. Quentin Riggins came into this pro football with 398 career tackles, so he knows where the ball carrier is, but not knowing as a great pass rusher, I think that's just a good design stunt that New York is having a hard time picking up. Now it is third down and 37. Jesus, Jesus. Make it even fourth down and 37. That's why Little Jadal has trotted out of the field. They lost that down on the penalty as time runs out on the third quarter. It is 28-6, Knights leading the Skyhawks at the end of three. And we'll come back after a word from our ABC station. Monday, Pete fights to save his sight. Somebody wants to do me bodily harm? Huh? While MacGyver fights to save his life. Who's there? Block the exits. A special all-new MacGyver Monday. This Thursday. What would you do this? The genuine New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages. Nor the book and match it. A Bell Atlantic Company. The biggest blunders in your favorite films, Monday at 11.
We're back for the final quarter, 28-6. The Knights leading the Skyhawks. And here at Carter Finley Stadium, it will be the Little Jadal punting their way for New York, New Jersey. And then we're going to show you why Mouse Davis was very unhappy with that illegal receiver downfield call. Low punt. That's a return Fielded ball. Fielded at the 20-yard line by Hargrove and down. Still loose. Sancho picks it up and goes to the end zone for a touchdown. Another defensive touchdown. And that's for a second. Ron Sancho. <laughs> that's the second time he's scored a touchdown this year. See, this is not a muff ball. This is a fumble. He catches it. He starts to return. It's elbows out away from the body. He gets it knocked out there by Campbell. Sancho picks it up and runs it in. He ran a punt block in for a touchdown not too long ago. Now he runs a fumbled punt return in for a touchdown. That's he's his, sort of a, a jack of all trades. That's his third touchdown of third the season. Third touchdown. Why? He's a scoring threat at oh, linebacker. Sancho! I see it. He too is trying to become all world. <laughs> he might make it too. Now Belli. Adds the extra point. Mouse is not so unhappy now. It's 35 to 6. The night. The Boz. He's an undercover cop with his own way of turning up the heat. Put up the wrong passenger, buddy. And when he decides to chill out, ah. he's stone cold. And then some. Brian Bosworth. Stone Cold. Rated R. Starts Friday, May 17th at select theaters. This is not what you want in a shave. Now you've got the edge with six rich lubricants for less irritation. You've got the edge. Top of the line parts, expert advice. That's your Big A Auto Parts star. Big A. He was a stranger in their house. Who are you? More evil than they ever suspected. Now, where's the money? Richard Chamberlain, as you've never seen him, Night of the Hunter, tonight. Ron Sancho out of LSU with his third touchdown of the season. <laughs> 35 to 6. You know, talking to the coaches about him last night, and he said he's just one of those guys. I mean, he doesn't look like a football player from a physical stature standpoint, but he just makes the play. Now, we want to go back on that screen pass where there was an ineligible receiver downfield. Well, at least it was called downfield, and the head coach, Mouse Davis, does not believe anybody was downfield. This is Mouse talking to the officials shortly after that. When the ball is in the air, lineman can release that field. Absolutely. He looks out, and then he calls his flag. <laughs> that was the mild part of that discussion. Bobby McAllister moves in at quarterback for the first time today. A diving attempt by Hargrove, and it'll be second and ten. So Bobby McAllister, who played at Michigan State for George Perlis, has been the starter here for a couple of games after May went out with an injury. He looked awfully good on the practice field Friday. He threw the ball very well. He says he's learning something every day he steps on the field and is really enjoying being a passing quarterback. It's from the shotgun. Under pressure, throws. Parker goes up again, and then a diving reception. I believe the Skyhawks have it. Yeah. Was that Parker? Or did he come up with it again? Oh, my, he came up with it over there. You, you, you just can't lay the ball up there and hope someone's going to catch it because when you're hoping someone's going to catch it, it's usually the opponent that makes your wish come true. Yeah. Here, you'll see what I'm talking about. He just lays it up there real soft and high. There's two people coming. Here comes Flandy and Newton. The two people fighting for the ball. Hey, Parker comes up with 
number eight. There's that concentration yeah. flat on his back. He makes the catch. And now Todd Hamill checks in at quarterback for the Knights. I like Todd Hamill. I think he's a real competitor and a super backup quarterback for him. Two interceptions by Parker. Wilkerson gets the first call. And little fisticuffs breaking out here. They're both going to get thrown out for two plays now. Watch. Pickerson and Alexander may have tangled. You don't want to mess with number 80, Andre Alexander of the New York, New Jersey Knights. He was once a little lightweight boxer. He'll take you on in a minute. <laughs> and now... <laughs> They have to kick them both out then. The Bernie Kukar's mic not functioning, so the players will be out for two plays apiece. Here, there it goes. They're throwing the punch there. There, nope. Left hook, right hook. Oh, yeah. But if they kick both guys out, both guys go out. Two plays apiece, and now here's Hamill. Todd Hamill with his first series of the game. Complete. Oh. Bashed was Lewis. He's okay. Samuel got him. Boy, he that got looked worse than it was, eh? Yeah, and the ball was tipped, but fortunately he didn't have his cleats in the ground because Padilla Samuel really smacked him. But he didn't have his cleats in the ground. You'll see the ball was definitely tipped. Now he gets it, seen he's not really, oh man, that was a heck of a hit. Well, that vicious. The ball at the Skyhawks 27 yard line. And the left guard pulled up and moved. That'll cost the Knights five yards. Pete Scott, the offensive center, didn't like the nose guard going ahead and taking that shot. 12.53 <laughs> to go. Are you impressed by the Knights? Yes, I am. And in fact, now uh, they look better in person than they looked for the Orla in the Orlando game tapes to me. They didn't play as well as the score indicated they played last week. And Mouse said that last night. Fumble. Skyhawks pounce on that loose ball. Wade Wilkerson got it back. Eric Wilkerson. You know, not only the ability gone the Knights way, but the breaks, the mental discipline on the loose yeah. balls. See, you have a new quarterback handing off in there. He misses the mesh point. He puts it on his hip rather than on in the, that belly area, and the ball drops to the turf. The ball at the 35-yard line as the Knights go in reverse here. They wanted to throw a screen, but he caught him. And he'll go down. Field and the flag it's comes down. It's going to be intentional grounding. Intentional grounding is the call. Another flag on the play. The other thing they might have called is defensive holding. We Brent. Well, it's least grounding, but they did. They did grab a hold of the back that was going out in the screen, and they can call that defensive holding. See, now he's going to intentionally ground that football. Yeah. That was a fairly feeble attempt. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you next time. I'll tell you so you can call it. <laughs> I tell you why don't you call it. That's really good. I like that. <laughs> Let's see. The ball is being put down on the uh, Knights 43. That's a lot. They of down. did have a first down at the Skyhawks 27-yard line. They're going to go even further back now, and this will be a third down play from the Knights 38-yard line. They're going for a World League record. 
Johan Wilkerson on a draw. That's <laughs> right. And then punt. Third down and 45 yards. So we'll make this one. Hamill. And now it's punt time. That was Anthony Hardy, the receiver. So some of the Knights' backups are getting some playing time here in the last quarter. You know that they, Raleigh Durham has gone to a 5-3 type defense with double safeties in there, and it's been effective. It really has helped them just a little bit. They don't play it every down, but when they do play it, it has been effective. They might as well go after it. Lil Jadal, who has hammered his punts all day. Fumble. Loose. Knights pounce on it again at the 30-yard line. There is a penalty marker down, however. Landa. <laughs> Can anything else go wrong for Roman Gabriel and the Skyhawks here this afternoon? Another turnover. We'll be right back. Knights ball at the 31. Join Jack Nicholas for the Memorial Tournament, sponsored by Dean Witter, May 18th. Some 18 years ago, a team of Kawasaki engineers stood on the bank of a Carlsbad, California lagoon. After two years of testing, their dream had become a reality, and the jet ski watercraft phenomenon began. Today, Kawasaki offers the most extensive line of personal watercraft in the world, and while much has changed since the early days, one fact remains the same. If it isn't Kawasaki, it isn't jet ski. Think anybody will buy it? It's my family. I want tires I can trust. 25 years ago, Sears introduced Michelin road handlers to America. I really do have a lot riding on my tires. And today, Sears introduces new Michelin road handlers. I'm not going to buy just any tires. With advanced road handling tread and a 60,000-mile warranty coast to coast. Michelin road handlers. The tires America trusts at the store America trusts. Who's going to back you better than Sears? So, I'm having breakfast with my buddies. And I order Kellogg's Bran Flakes. And right away, Scott says, Problem, Dad? Truth is, Kellogg's Bran Flakes taste terrific. It's this nutty, toasted wheat taste. And hey, come on, they're Kellogg's, right? So, I lean over to Scott, look him right in the eye, and I say, Did you know a spoon can be a deadly weapon? Whoa! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, double -double. Oh, double good Kellogg's Bran Flakes. Toasted taste to you. Marvin Hargrove, number 80, in the middle of your screen, had the one punt return knocked out of his hands. This one, he just uses poor judgment, trying to slide underneath it, turns the ball over. Now it's a mad scramble to get it, turn it over. I mean, that's a terrible field position to turn the football over. They have a short 31-yard field to go on in and score again. Hargrove, pretty sloppy football. Hargrove got a lecture from Roman Gabriel about concentration, right? Well, and this team had 12 men on the field. For that punt. That's why the penalty flag came down. It's a first and ten for the Knights. Hamill running the option is down at the 30-yard line. Another penalty. The, there's a special teams coach on the field that's assigned to the substitution routine. And when there's 12 guys on the field, nine times out of ten, it's the special teams coach's fault. Let's check in with Mark Jones and Jeff Graham. Mark. Jeff, you were telling me just a few moments ago we saw the coach Mouse uh, never really pleased, but he could be pleased with your performance today. Well, we'll have to go look at the film. There's always things we can improve on, and uh, we have a big week coming up next week, so we're going to have to look at the film and get better in every way we can. This is definitely not a team the caliber of the London Monarchs. Uh, any thoughts on that taking on a team a lot tougher? That is 6-0, not 0-6. That's right. Uh, well, you know, we just got to go into each week prepared mentally and uh, execute our plays. And... London's got a great team, a lot of respect for him, and we're going to have to watch a lot of film on him and get ready for him. The gauntlet has been thrown down, guys, upstairs. Hamill, meanwhile, Mark, made his way to the five-yard line. He'll be marked down there. Speaking of that London-New York game, let me remind you again that 
unlike the NFL games in the East, this one will start at 8 o'clock, and it is a Saturday night game at the Meadowlands. The crowd unhappy. They wanted the fumble call, but it was whistled down at the five-yard line. And London, meanwhile, before they can think about the Knights, they have a big one against San Antonio tomorrow night in Texas. Then the three games next Saturday, the key one, London at the Meadowlands. And on Sunday, we'll be in Germany. Birmingham, having lost in Barcelona, will try to come back against the Galaxy. Here we have 9-16. This baby rip. is no longer in doubt. Mouse Davis and the Knights solely in command, as they have been all game long, except for just a few minutes in the second half. You see, they went to a guard over formation, which is an unbalanced line. And they use that down in here. Here's what I'm talking about. You'll see that there's more linemen on the one side. See, here they are. There's three linemen. That's the only time you'll see that uh, in a run and shoot offense. Here is Eric Yuma at a running back with Wilkerson, and Hamill goes into the end zone. For the touchdown. That's like stealing. <laughs> That's like stealing running the option on this guy. No one's taking a quarterback. I don't know how many, you know, someone's got to take him. Why don't you go get him? <laughs> Come on, get out of here, go get him. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when you beat Raleigh Durham, you should get half a win instead of a whole one. Oh, yeah, coach. I don't know. They're they're not playing very good football. See, there's just no one on. Someone's got to contest the quarterback and make him pitch. That was Jeffrey who was shaken up. Maybe Eric Yuma will get to play. Absolutely. We look forward to another Operation Discovery player. I think everybody on the Knights will get to play some this afternoon. Now, what happens when you get a game like this that really doesn't challenge you and you got a big one the next week what's the problem for the coaches well no problem I'll tell you the problem is in my opinion is the head coach takes out anybody that is really his super player and gets him out of there and sets him on the bench healthy and lets him watch the other guys play now even though there's eight minutes to go get him out of there no sense of getting a Wilkerson or somebody like that banged up when you're winning this ball game you want him healthy for next Saturday low but it made it they better get another kicker <laughs> Kendall Trainer, please call the Knights. We'll be right back. You know, for the smallest jobs to great American homes, the paint more people count on is Sears Weather Beater. Guaranteed to last for 15 years, no matter where you live, no matter what the weather. For the paint, for the craftsman tools, guaranteed to last. Count on Sears, the home of America's craftsmen. And during Sears' best weather beater paint sale, this satin finish is on sale, only $17.99, only at Sears. Linen, no better way to face the day. The morning belongs to Skin Bracer Aftershave. Its cool, brisk tingle really gets you going. And what a great scent. Skin Bracer. No better way to face the day. A company can learn a lot in 125 years. As you learn, you make your product better and better. 125 years of quality. That's why people who know use Valvoline. Got him. Got him. Need him? I got six double running backs. You want me to trade the Raiders linebackers? No problem. Collect ProSet football cards with your favorite stars in action and get a ProSet World League card in every pack, plus a chance to win free official NFL memorabilia. That first kid, you think you'll trade Warren Moon? Only from ProSet, America's number one football card. Awesome! Birmingham needs to fire up its offense to stay in the playoff hunt. They travel to Frankfurt to tackle the Galaxy in the World League next Sunday on ABC Sports. Well, crowd of 10,069, and many of them still staying loyal, despite the lopsided nature of this contest. Belli kicks it off. Special teams have helped ruin the Skyhawks here today. Hines will now try his hand. He is out to the 29-yard line deck. Here's how the game's going. You take a look at this extra point by Belli. It barely makes it over. You know, and if he isn't any better kicker than this, when you play the good teams that you have to play coming up, it could be the difference in winning and losing. 
you know, one of the things we certainly want to do here this afternoon is wish your mother a happy birthday. Well, thank you. Yeah, happy birthday, Mom. I won't tell them how old you are, but I will say it's an offensive tackles number <laughs> on the high side. <laughs> Watching out in California, is she today? Oh. In Calistoga, California, in that Napa Valley. Watching love to watch football. E. Really love to watch Wyoming, football. Wyoming, make that play. <laughs> yeah. And she critiques you and I pretty good, too. Here's good contact. Here's a really a delayed handoff in the backfield. And here comes David Adeen, and he's been coming on strong the last few weeks. Here is see they tried to pick him up with a backside tackle and couldn't do it. Your mother's watching? Yes, she's watching. I'm you glad we have at least a couple of viewers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she doesn't miss, and, and she doesn't miss. I always count on those loyal mothers. Seven minutes under pressure again. McAllister with that escapability. Out to the 25. And down. The story behind the 42 to 6 shows you that the Knights have scored 28 points off five Raleigh Durham turnovers. Wilkerson with 91 yards rushing. And the Skyhawks have moved only once in tonight territory. That was the first series of the second half. That was their scoring drive. They punched in a touchdown, made it 21 to 6 and then promptly missed the extra point. And after this, the final round of the Byron Nelson Classic. That's coming up as soon as we conclude with the World League action here. And next week, we will take you to Frankfurt, Germany. It'll be Frankfurt against Birmingham. Brent, is uh, Arlene, your wife, still beating you in golf on Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> and Wednesdays, too. If Wednesdays you <laughs> <laughs> Did you have to bring that up? I was you know, enjoying a nice afternoon watching, <laughs> watching football. And, but I give her a lot of shots. Okay, okay. She's able to. I hope Wolf can come back in and play. He's their best offensive lineman and has for the year been the healthiest. Oh. Oh, wow. Third and 14, McAllister maneuvering his receiver. Goes, got it! Melvin Patterson to the 10. Yeah, they're going to line it down Flag. Was he beyond the line of scrimmage? Yeah. It was close. I think Mike Scott, number 74, drifted down the line, beyond the line of scrimmage. But see, this is what he can give you. He does give you this. He gets scrambling around there, and he can throw that strike down the field. You know, Dick, as Peter Bush trots onto the field of punt, I thought there was one huge advantage in coming to Raleigh-Durham for a football game. You know what that is? Uh, the restaurant I ate at the other night? No, no, that, that's a good one. But, but because it's Raleigh and Durham, we got two fruit baskets instead of one. Oh, that's right. I'd I like did. to thank the Chamber of Commerce of the, yeah. both those cities. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> I told them they made a mistake. <laughs> it's a low punt, Alexander. And he'll be down at the 45. Mercifully for the Skyhawks, only 6.52 to go in this beauty. And we'll be right back. So, I'm having breakfast with my buddies, and I order Kellogg's Bran Flakes. And right away, Scott says, Problem, Dad? Truth is, Kellogg's Bran Flakes taste terrific. It's this nutty, toasted wheat taste, and hey, come on, right, they're Kellogg's, right? So, I lean over to Scott, look him right in the eye, and I say, Did you know a spoon can be a deadly weapon? Whoa! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, double -L. Oh, double good Kellogg's Bran Flakes. Toasted taste to you. Plum Bob's T-Squares Tape Rules, what do I know? Zip. Want to know more? Ask Ace. <laughs> this Stanley Tape Rule with free utility knife is only $8.99, and this extension cord with reel just $9.88. Plum Bob, John. Hey, Ace is the place for me. Man, no better way to face the day. The morning belongs to Skin Bracer Aftershave. Its cool, brisk tingle really gets you going. And what a great scent. Skin Bracer. No better way to face the day. You looking for some good times? <laughs> your Kawasaki dealer's got just what you need. Good times credit. If you qualify, you can use it on just about anything in the store. Motorcycles. <coughs> jet ski watercraft. <coughs> apparel. Accessories. <coughs> even service. You'll get an answer fast and even better, zero down financing. So get on down to your Kawasaki dealer while you still got something left to sell you. Can you give me a hand with this door? 
Hello? What's it like to face a putt worth $198,000? Find out in the final round of the GTE Byron Nelson Classic, next on ABC Sports. Roman Gabriel was a great quarterback in the National Football League, but this performance here today has to be a total embarrassment. And while you were away, he told his coaches they'll work 24 hours a day. This team has a chance to go 0 and 10. They could indeed be the Sky Pigeons of the World League. Down 42 to 6 right now. Todd Hamill with a first down at the 45-yard line. And a handoff to Eric Yuma, the Operation Discovery running yeah. back that John Ralston brought to the New York, New Jersey team. That's the second time he's been able to carry the ball this year. He's from Belgium. In fact, he's 22 years old today, sharing my mother's birthday, May the 5th. Uh, happy birthday also to Eric. Yep. Nice that he's able to get some action. You love to see the Operation Discovery players. And do they get excited about playing? Uh, Hamill, the quarterback. Yuma, the running back. Hamill stepping out, and he hits Hardy. Hardy out of bounds on the far side at the 40-yard line. So we're here in Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is on the campus of North Carolina State with Dick Vermeil and Mark Jones. I'm Brent Musburger. Very one-sided World League action on this Sunday. The Knights, who will be winning for the fourth straight week to push their record to four and three. This will give them a sweep of the North American East Division. And they appear headed for the playoff. Four teams will qualify. This is Eric Yuma from Belgium getting the nod. And it will be a fourth down. And the Knights will punt the ball at 541. You know who made that play was number 56, Quentin Riggins. And he was the young linebacker that got in and got the two sacks in a row. He's made a number of good plays today. Next Saturday night, the big one for the Knights. They will host the London Monarchs, who for the time being are unbeaten, although the Monarchs have a tough one in San Antonio tomorrow night. High punt by Lil Jadal, trying to drop it inside the 10. Beautiful punt, big high bounce. Knights have got it surrounded. It'll be down at the five yard line. Now Let's nobody wants to now. field it. To Mark Jones, Mark. Eric Wilkerson today with uh, 16 rushes for 91 yards. Eric, the big misconception with the run and shoot is that uh, it's all passing, no rushing, but you're uh, proof that there is a lot of running in this attack. Yeah, it's called run and shoot, so you know, when, when the pass is working, you know, he sort of stick with that. Then if the run is working, he'll go with that. Sometimes they like complement each other. Looking ahead to next week, you have London coming up, a very, very tough defensive front for your thoughts on them. Well, I'm about to hit the weights this week because I know it's going to be a very physical game. You know, I think I owe a couple of people some. I ain't going to say who, but I think we're going to be ready for it. Who is that? <laughs> you got to tell me. You would know. Please? <laughs> you would know. Oh, great politician, guys. He won't tell me. Upstairs. I don't blame him. There's the final from the NBA, and the Boston Celtics move on to the next round, 124-121 over Indiana. You know, there was some bad feelings that came out of that 22-18 London win over New York. The Knights feel that some of the London players were taunting them late in that game. So that baby in the Meadowlands is going to be a tough one next Saturday night. I tell you that Eric Burkles had made a 74-yard run against the, the London that night, too. So he know, uh, they know about it. Okay. I hope that game is carried via the Armed Forces Television so Network in Germany. I know it. So That'll we be one it. we'll watch. We can do that, too. Birch was the ball carrier. This is a third and five for the Skyhawks and McAllister. They have been thoroughly dominated by the night defense here today. Short of the first down. Now let's take a look at the North American East. New York with a win today goes to four and three. Montreal in overtime last night defeated Sacramento. Orlando loses for the fifth straight time. Raleigh Durham will go to 0 and 7 and for the Knights their schedule looks like this they get the advantage of playing both London and San Antonio at the Meadowlands and then they will have to go down to Birmingham in between Birch punting one to Alexander he runs back inside the 45 yard line He's taken down at the 40 yard line Brian McFatter 
there on the special team with three minutes and 14 seconds to go. And Dick, it has to be terribly, terribly discouraging for Roman Gabriel to try and put this back together. Oh, yeah, this is really yeah. an embarrassment here today. It is, and it, it rips you inside, and they've been, been getting beat all season, and it just, you keep working harder, you add hours today to try to detail things, but if sometimes if they just aren't good enough, they aren't good enough. That's all there is to it. You can stay up, to, I've done it. Stay up to six o'clock in the morning, you still get beat. Gerald Mack and Mouse Davis. I think you can hear his voice. He's still not satisfied. Get it to him faster. We gotta have that one. 35 trap best option. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I think we probably could get it. Mouse Davis, the father of the run and shoot, developed the offensive style while he was the head coach out at Portland State and joined the USFL as the offensive coordinator of the Houston Panthers. Here is Yuma. Good running, good running. It was a trap play, a counter type trap play, and he just he powered some of his own yards. Did a nice job all by himself. <laughs> Belgium. He's been playing on the special teams, but coming into this ball game, he'd only gotten to carry the ball one time. He's really put together physically, too. I mean, he's got the bulging muscles. Evo BDK of London will be in action this week in the States. The E-Train, he also is an impressive operation discovery running back. Here is Hardy breaking free and out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Well, this telecast is presented by authority of the World League of American Football and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the World League of American Football is prohibited. I doubt that too many folks would want to see this one a second time. <laughs> 225, and it is 42 to 6. See, and they got to be impressed by the Knights. They have to keep trying to score, too. Oh, fumble. Not that Because, time. you know, one of the tie-breaking things come to point scored somewhere down that line, doesn't it? What's right. Like third phase. Well, you know, there's also a big break for the U.S. champions of the North American East and West, and that is that London, if they win, cannot host a game on the second. So they so have to come here. Yeah, there could be a playoff game in the Meadowlands on, uh, on June 2nd. We come down to the two-minute warning. The Knights about to win for the fourth straight time, and the Skyhawks will lose for the seventh straight time. We'll come right back to wrap this one up. He's done. Well, tonight, Richard Chamberlain stars as you've never seen him before. The world premiere movie thriller, Night of the Hunter, the ABC Sunday night movie tonight at 9, 8 Central. Final two minutes here. Todd Hamill with a second and 13. And he fires complete, and let's check in with Mark Jones. Mark? Well, I got Ron Sancho right here, a star of the defensive unit for the Knights. Uh, yes, you know it. Tell me, you guys have really dominated this team today. Um, what's been the big key? Uh, I think the big key is just being sound. We were expecting a little bit different type of game plan coming into the game. And they really, uh, they wasn't too defined today. They didn't know what they wanted to do. They didn't know if they thought they could run on us, pass on us, and they so diversified in the game plan. I think that, that's really the majority of the thing that shut them down for themselves. Next week, you're looking at teams, a team Monday with very big bats, strong bats. Yeah. Can you dominate them? Defending? Well, we played them before, and uh, we had a real good half against them in the first half, and then we fell apart in the second half. And it's one of them things that... Uh, oh. Time to go. It's such is the nature of football, guys. <laughs> Upstairs. That's great. Mark, it's the World League. Yeah, it's the World League. There'll be a punt, and Sancho says, this is how I can get another touchdown. Yeah, Ron yeah. Sancho has already scored a touchdown off a fumble on a return here today. He has three return touchdowns, and the Raleigh-Durham Skyhawks will try. Five-foot-seven-inch Peta Samuel back as the return man. He'll let this one go into the end zone, and it'll come out on the 20 yard line. Well, the European division, there's some pushing and shoving down there at the 10 yard line. A couple of players are gonna sit out a couple of plays. It's quieted down down there now. Woo! 
Gerald Mack and Joe Campbell were hooked up. And there is Mack coming off to the sideline, and Campbell will go off on the other side. Here's how it started, Dick. Right in the middle of your screen now, Mack is, is a defensive pack, uh, back taking on a great big linebacker in 99. If you're going to get in a fight, you might as well get in a fight in a guy your size, would you? You know, I... I so they'll both leave the field for two plays a piece. The ball comes out to the 20 yard line where it'll be the Skyhawks ball. You, you know, I got to tell you what the big problem is with the uh, with the Knights. OK, as, as you know, I went to practice on Thursday, right? And Mouse Davis brought the team together at the end of practice. And he said, gentlemen, gentlemen, we've had some football disappearing from practice. Remember, I've got the keys to all the rooms. Nobody takes any football. <laughs> There's McAllister airing out a football, and it's intercepted was that intercepted by, by Newton? Picked off at the 29-yard line. That was Newton and Parker going side by side. They were the intended receivers. Yeah, they are the intended receivers. He just laying it up there, and they're, they're sitting back there deep in his own defense. If they're going to throw the ball in these situations, run your square in crossing patterns in front of the zone and give the, the chance for the receiver the to run back and catch up with the defender somewhere downfield. Throwing them up like that, you're going to get them picked off. McAllister's now 0 for 3 and 2 interceptions. And the sixth turnover by the Skyhawks here this afternoon. So the holding penalty is declined, and it will be the Knights ball. So we were talking about the European standings just a short time ago. London unbeaten in Blaine, San Antonio. Barcelona now 6-1. 36,000 on hand on Maju week yesterday. What the great story about Barcelona is they went home after that overtime victory over Sacramento and 2,000 fans in Barcelona greeted them back at their hotel. As the World League making a big impact over in Europe. Obviously, they've got work to do here in the United States, and we go back down to Mark Jones. Mark? A tough guy to hang on to, I'm telling you. I'm told that it would have been a $100 fine had he missed it. That's an expensive fine. Yeah, it would have been pretty, for this, it would have been pretty expensive, man. I'm not making that much. But uh, <laughs> no, it's one of them things, we're talking about London, and uh, we had a good half against them, and then we had a couple of penalties. I didn't really think the, the cause was horrendous in the London game. Worst I've ever been associated with. It's one of them things that we're going to be ready for London, and I think... Uh, we're going to try and come along next week, and we're going to try and do the same things we've been doing against everybody else. Thanks for joining us, and uh, don't miss any plays, please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, Mike, thank you very much. Indeed, the salary cap, in case you're not aware in this league, uh, $20,000 per man, twenty five dollars for the quarterback. Yeah, and uh, you divide that up into uh, 10 games, that's not a lot of money if you start getting fined 100 bucks yeah. for, for missing a play. Yes, he is going home. He has seen enough. That's a coach. Yes, he's out of here, <laughs> folks. That's it. Just roll me on home. Roll me over and send me home. And it ends 42 to 6. The Knights win for the fourth straight time. Skyhawks lose for the seventh straight time. Byron Nelson final round is coming up. It's all right now. Let's send you to Roger Twible for an update on that story. Roger. Thank you.